Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final day of competition here at the High Res Expo 2017, presented by Twitch Prime. My name is Golden Boy, and I thank you so much for joining us today as we are going to have not one, not two, but three incredible finals for you. But first up, a new one entering the space, the one and only Paladins. And I'm really excited to bring you guys all the analysis on this desk. But before we get into all that goodness, let's go ahead and take a look at what we saw in day number three.
Welcome back, everyone, to the High Res Expo 2017 as we get ready to kick off our Paladins Finals. This is going to be a great, great event. I can't wait. Personally, I'm very excited. I'm also excited for that guy to get those pictures. Uh, but I cannot wait for this one to kick off. You know, I've been uh, introduced to Paladins this weekend. This is actually the first time I've really had the opportunity to deep dive into this game. And I tell you, it's been a very, very fun experience. It's a game that, uh, to be fair, like is unlike anything else that I have checked out in the past. And I am stoked to uh, be joined by two great people on the analyst. So let me go ahead and introduce these fine gentlemen for you. And let me go ahead and stop talking. To my left, we have I Hold Shift. How you doing, man? Doing so great. I mean, we have an all EU final. These are arguably two of the best teams in the world coming in. D69 has a little bit of issues maybe before, but they have been absolutely dominating. I'm really excited. This is going to be hot. It's going to be a great one indeed. And then to the farther left of me is the one and only the C3PO, dare I say, <laughs> of Paladins, Hi-Rez Vox. How you doing, man? I am doing fantastic. Just <laughs> thrilled to be here on the final day. Paladins Esports has come so far in a year, and now to be here on the main stage alongside both of you, absolutely phenomenal. It's going to be great. Can't wait, of course. But we talked about all the awesome things that we are bringing to you this weekend. And let's go ahead and remind you fine folks back at home, because there's a little thing. I don't know if you heard about it. It's called Twitch Prime. That's right. Twitch Prime it gives you some free stuff, because Twitch likes to give people free things. You can actually get for Smite, the JT6000, Yana skin, and the new Celtic event, Path of the Queen. That is going to be available to Twitch Prime members for the incredible price of free. And then all you got to do, super simple is just go to highrestudios.com slash link. You can win in-game hashtag rewards. I'm kidding. Please don't spam that. You guys <laughs> are the worst. Uh, so go ahead and do that once again, highrestudios.com slash link. And then since it's finals day, we've been teasing it. We've been talking about it throughout this entire weekend. You can check out the finals, 5 p.m. Eastern time today at a theater near you, courtesy of our friends over at Coke Esports. Make sure you use that hashtag Coke Esports. Why take some selfies when you're at the theater with your homies? Should be a good time indeed. But let's go ahead now and shift our focus over to Paladins and the road to the finals. It has all come down to this. Two teams remain, both hailing from the European region. You have District 69, the second seed, Burrito, the top seed, two of the finest Paladins teams in this tournament. District 69 had a road to get here, facing off against the Australian powerhouse, Abyss. And then meanwhile, Burrito and Match Point, well, Burrito pretty much had their number and they find themselves in the finals, guys. The interesting thing about Abyss, I mean, you really can't go on without talking about them. Is you they, have to. They almost actually overthrew Burrito, went to five games in their first set, and that fifth map actually was three to three in points. It came down to one last neutral capture point, and both of those captures were above 90%. It really doesn't get any closer than that. So uh, things are going really well for Burrito throughout this, with this matchup with these 69. So we'll have to see if they can continue that dominance. That certainly will be the case. There's so much at stake for these teams. There's regional pride, but there's pride within the region as well. First seed from Europe versus second seed from Europe, and it all comes down to this. Yeah, it's going to be great. But first, let's go ahead and introduce our first team and get you guys back at home acquainted with this squad. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for District 69. First up is Elven Path. Unbelievable. This guy is an incredible slayer. Look for him to do some work. Perdo. Shippa. And finally, Jera. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at District 69.
And that was the second seeded District 69. But now let's go ahead and introduce Burrito Esports. First up, we have Bonker. Next is Thiel. Followed by Bird. To his right, Spunky. And finally, don't let this name fool you, he's anything but lazy. And let's go ahead and take a closer look at Burrito Esports. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We're starting off with our Paladins Invitational. Things are still a little bit rough for me, but thank you for being here. Now, things that aren't rough are for you guys. You guys fantastically slung yourself through the tournament at both Burrito and now District 69 are here in the finals. Let me ask you this, Elvin Path. You guys made the finals of DreamHack as well. You guys look fantastic there. And I want to talk about being one of the originals. DreamHack was one of the first big tournaments. Now we're here at the first Paladins Invitational HRX. What's it like to be one of the inaugural or one of the first players here for what could be a great esports scene? Um, it's honestly feeling very good because it feels like we're in the beginning of something great, something really huge, and I have strong faith that eventually Paladins will be crowded, Paladin stage will be crowded, and it feels amazing to just build this history right here, right now. Now, I think people are familiar. I think people are familiar about how you feel about Paladins, but I think you have, I think you have, a, that's. Paladins is the best game ever. And now Bird, this is something that you've done before. You've been here on stage. You've been here on this stage for a different title for Smite. Smite has flourished over the past couple of years and we've gone from a small, small place in the middle of Midtown to this lovely arena. Talk to me about what it's like looking at where the Smite scene went from and do you see any parallels for Paladins? Yeah, I mean, it's it's very similar. They come from similar places. Smite was built up from the ground. It was like, I mean, it was high res real first esports title. And now that Paladin is coming in, we have the infrastructure. We have everything that's needed to be the best best game. <laughs> there you go. You heard it from both Elven Path over here and, of course, Bird. Paladin's best game, apparently. Absolutely. Very excited to kick this one off. Now, before I let you guys go, my one question that I think everybody here wants to know is straight up, Who's gonna win? How you feeling? Who's gonna win? I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the guys in black and white hoodies. <laughs> and now Bird, Elvin seems to think, well, it's a toss up. How you feeling? Uh, I think at the end of the day, we're, we're all friends here. What matters is that NA lost. I didn't even hear what he said. One player is focused, the other player wants to get it going, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. Ladies and gentlemen, your first Paladins Invitational at HRX. So these players realize that they're in America, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I want to just really throw that out there. So much, so much salt. 
It's unbelievable. So much just fire. Anyway, let's let's go <laughs> ahead and take a look here. Uh, Matt bands that have come through, uh, Fish Market and Timber Mill. Guys, what do you think about these bands? You know, it, first of all, I'm glad he wasn't holding the mic because he probably would have dropped it. Oh, it, he spin <laughs> hot fire like Dylon, man. It's My insane. goodness. <laughs> uh, but getting back to these maps, it, this isn't really all that surprising. Uh, Burrito Hilly hasn't had the best of time on Fish Market. And Timber Mill, Vox, we talk about so much being kind of a niche map because Knesset, which was kind of a standout over the semifinals, is really strong on this map. Absolutely. It is her home proving ground. It is Knesset's home turf. There's so much verticality on this map, which keeps her safe from flankers, notably Eevee, who is also a priority pick on Timber Mill. And most teams, they just don't want to really put it all down to just who gets what specific champion. They want to take that completely off the table and go with something which is a little bit more safe. Yeah, and that's kind of the key as far as what the other maps bring. You know, there's a couple of compositional choices as we look at what might be the first pick that really might fit the play style one way or the other. The big thing I think we need to talk about here with Golden Boy is the fact that Burrito has been a very patient, very passive, kind of tacit start looking for those opening picks, while District 69 has really been attacking, and it's really kind of interesting to see Frog Isle, which is one of those smaller kind of close-knit close quarters maps. Yeah, tell me a bit about wh what kind of champions we're going to see on Frog Isle. What can we expect from these two teams? One champion, which I think we're definitely going to be taking a look at, will be Eevee, who's usually picked up on Frog Isle due to her mobility, able to get into the enemy's backline and disrupt and distract. But on a bowl-shaped map like Frog Isle, there's so much focus on the capture objective. I think that the frontliners are going to be so key to both teams when drafting. You Here we go, frontliner. It's, it's uh, Makoa, that's first pick by Burrito. Both teams in their nine matches preferred to use Makoa in eight of them. That's just really impressive. This is, folks, for those of you guys just joining us, this is the champion draft here. Players pick their champions, and the objective here, very similar to what you would see in Smite, just go ahead and out comp your teammates. Typically, you would see you know, one or two frontliners, one support, and the rest fills out with either flank or damage, depending on what the team wants to approach that particular map with. Yeah, and it's interesting because as we're looking at the first three overall picks, it's the three premier frontliners that we've seen. District 69's Unbelievable has been his namesake on Ruckus, and we can't imagine he's going to be playing anything else besides that box. I certainly wouldn't imagine that anything else would be the case. Marito now finishing off their draft with Makoa, Eevee, Shaolin, Maldamba, and Victor. Yeah. So drafting the Eevee early on to allow that immobile Victor to be played. However, District 69, they have their full lineup as well, and it's looking very dangerous. Indeed, and the interesting thing is the Victor pick, Bird played him twice, he's sitting one and one, and that's going to be the real key. You know, if Cauterize, the item that allows you to essentially negate some healing, I think if Victor's able to target multiple characters, he's really going to see the late game itemization play through really well with that Cauterize pickup. All right, guys, well, we're going to hear more from you in just a little bit, but folks back at home and those of you in the arena, it's time for our first game at the Paladins Invitational. Get hyped in the chat, get hyped over here on the stage. I'm going to send it over to our commentators. Thank you, Golden Boy. It's time to get this thing started. Welcome. Paladins is here on the main stage. Finally, it's been a long time. My name is Rain Day, and of course, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Nick Hi-Rez. Pretty hair. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. I'm so excited that we have two of our biggest teams, most competitive matchup I think that we possibly could have seen out of this tournament. Yeah, we're ready to get this thing started. There's so much on the line for both of these teams. They are both European, though, so they kind of could have just stayed in Europe and not had to travel to Atlanta to have this matchup. But they've been playing against each other so much online. Really, where they come to play and really what distinguishes them is the land setting. Will they be the same team here? It's time to get the first game of the final start at Burrito Esports versus D69. On your left-hand side, you've got Bonker playing Shaolin, Lazy will be on Victor, Bird on Eevee, Spunky on Maldamba, and Thiel on the Makoa as the fight starts. There we go, and Androx to ship on Cassie, Unbelievable on Ruckus, Elven Path on Fernando, and Jera on that healer, trying to keep everyone alive for D69, and he's doing a great job of it thus far. First Blood already going the way of D69, and again, Shiva with two kills, Perdo gets one on the Thiel, Frontliner is down, Lazy's trying to escape, but Perdo is hot on his trails. The Androxus player, the carry from D69, is having a field day and 81% on the capture objective already for D69. And flawless against District 69 throughout the online stages. Burrito falling wow. to them at DreamHack when it comes down to the wire at Lannan. And looking that way once again as Burrito taking the first payload of the game. This double frontliner from District 69 is so dangerous. Nice hook by Thiel. Gonna pull an Androx as the rever reversal comes through. A nice reset of that. If he hits that last shot, 
he's able to dash again, and so that's what allows him to escape certain death. Lazy and Bonker stabilizing quite well for the boys of Burrito Esports, who admittedly have been caught off guard by how quick D69 have come at them. But finally, with a minute and 57 seconds on the clock, feels like they can take a bit of a breath. They've stalled this push for now. Both teams, I feel, have a strong draft, but Lazy on this victor is really not where we're used to seeing him. We're seeing him on characters like Eevee, like Kinesa especially, so I think a little bit out of his comfort zone. One of the stars from Burrito yeah. is going to have a lot to prove on this champion. There's so many mechanics involved in Eevee, but Victor a lot more simple. He's a really good starter champion, and that's why Lazy being one of the mechanical masters. You see him on, on Kinesa. You see him on Eevee, and maybe not able to play to his full potential with this selection, but Thiel, he's on his Makoa. He loves it, misses the dredge anchor as the payload continues to push. A minute and 16 seconds left on the clock. D69 looking to make things happen. And that's two missed dredge anchors in a row. Thiel's gonna fall. If you told me that was gonna happen on the online stages, I would have told you you were crazy. A cursed arm from Perdo on District 69. A lot of momentum on their side as they round the final corner. Five streak for unbelievable. The line of sight is perfect for him. No one can get near this payload. Ruckus is just unwailing all of this damage onto anyone who steps clear. A third missed hook by Makoa. Thiel is not playing to his usual game, and they are forcing out the big ultimates by Bird. Ice Storm comes through. Thiel falls down. Bird forced to soar away, just trying to buy time. No one is on the payload for Burrito now just slithering in. Spunky able to stall that out for now, but I don't know if Burrito's going to be able to hold on. That's going to be it. District 69. 2-0 at the start of this game over Burrito, Nick. I knew they were strong on land. I didn't think they were this strong. And this does a lot for them in terms of their margin for error for the rest of the game because in Paladins, should Burrito have defended, they would have received a point. We would be all tied up one to one here. Now, even if District 69 lose this payload, they have the chance to defend and right. benefit from that defense point. Go up three to one and have a chance to close it out in the next round with a capture. Damage is relatively even throughout the charts here, but I want to take a look at some of the itemization from both teams as well. A couple of notable ultimates up for the teams as well. District 69, Hexafire, the only one here being very careful. Four cauterizes from District 69. That is four anti-heals. Two of those are level two, so that's 60% healing reduction. Spunky's gonna have a tough time keeping his team healthy. We saw them target the healers yesterday. They did the same thing against the Abyss, and it seems to be working against Burrito. The number one seed in NA getting beat right now. 2-0 by the number two seed in Europe, excuse me, and there we go. It seems like there's nobody able to get D69 off the point thus far. Vox it himself frontliners are going to play the big difference in this game and meaning the difference here is per doe going in on the end doe landing every single shot in that clip feels like he has yet to miss there spunky in a little bit of trouble mike's wow. over center right now but it's going to throw all that reversal damage straight back into lazy can't get out of the danger but he does get the damage off double kill for sheepa to back him up feel great hook to put him under pressure but he's got the healing from the yin clones and d69 with 90 percent on the objective thus far are looking far and beyond better than their european counterparts burrito Deal in that Ancient Rage trying to get things stabilized Nothing. for his team. And he's forced to back off overtime. Already ticked down. The only frontliner is dead for Burrito. Two from District 69 charging forward. Already starting to create space. 3-0. D69 on Frog Isle. This is not some type of janky ice mines. This is not something that is a strategy that they have to build around and somebody could get caught off guard. This is a very normal map that a lot of these players are used to. So to really be 3-0 up here, means they got either completely outdrafted or Burrito or having land nerves yet again. The biggest weakness in the draft, I think, is just going to be lazy. Not to call him out for playing well or bad or any of that. It's really just not a comfort pick for him. If you look at everyone from District 69, they are on a comfort pick. That's right. And of course, Lazy not able to do that much work. Bird, though, comes in. Lazy finally gets a kill. Bird goes down after the Ice Storm crippling the enemies, but it's not going to stop the push for long. Unbelievable on the Ruckus has still been unstoppable. 15 streak for him, 14 streak for Jera. Bonker doing everything that he can. The sub coming in for Sun Commander, who could not make it from Burrito, doing a great job of just stalling any of this push. And finally, Unbelievable goes down. It looks like Burrito might 
haven't engaged it here. District 69 really soft right now. One frontliner just gonna try to stay alive. Elven path from the Spernano just trying to retreat to Jera Hazin, trying to get him healed up. Respawns are starting to come through for District 69. A big planet cooldown, actually able to pick up Elven path. That's huge. That respawn is going to be so staggered. It's gonna buy a lot of time and a great dredge anchor from Thiel is gonna bring another pick on in for Burrito. A minute on the clock. D69 have pushed this so far and they are up 3-0. This could mean conversion, this could mean game one if they're able to make it happen, but Burrito Esports are fighting with their lives right now. Lacey on the victory, he's getting pressured by Perdo. He takes him down. The revolver will come out over the assault rifle. Evie forced to blink back and soar away to safety to wait for her teammates as the push continues. Unbelievable on the ruckus. So much damage mitigation, so much damage himself is gonna continue pushing this, and Burrito are gonna have to give everything they've got right now. Ultimate manage so important as we come down to the wire. Any ultimates used now will means they will not be available for the following round, Bird Field. District 69 out, trying to find a weak spot in their defense. Big Dread Serpent comes out from Burrito to start the fight. Hexafire comes in, but the Immortal immunes him, keeps him alive. The damage comes through. Evie blinks in, a nice ice block to get away, but she gets taken down. Birdo with the triple kill for D69 is going to help them push this in and secure victory over Burrito Esports in game one. Burrito just looks shocked right now on the stage. D69 unwavering, almost emotionless when they are winning. It's absolutely incredible. These guys are beasts on land. Perdo doesn't seem to miss a shot. Elven Path is loving what he is seeing from the crowd and from his team. How do you even break that game down, Nick? It feels like so many things went wrong, not only from a mechanical level, but I think a champion draft, a player selection level. It just seems like Lazy wasn't on the type of champion he needed to be to really change this game. But it just seemed like D69 had it all figured out. This is giving me serious deja vu of six months ago when we were in Sweden casting this final, and this semi-final actually. And that's big because that's what's gonna be in Burrito's heads as well. They lose that first game in a big way. That is the first thing going through their heads right now. Like, oh no, not DreamHack again. I do, I, we can't have this happen again, guys. What are we gonna do? How does the mentality get affected now? We'll have to wait and see. Before we get into the next game though, we have some updates we wanna bring you about eSports for Paladins. I know a lot of you are excited to see it. And I want to talk to you about the Season 1 plans we've got. It's very similar, if you were around in Paladins earlier, to what we did prior. A couple of different names, though. Going into February, we'll start the Open Bracket Qualifiers, and that means any team can be a part of this and join and say that they could be the best in Paladins. So that's a great chance for new players to come into the scene. After that, four teams will qualify into the Spring Radiant Qualifiers and give them a three-week round-robin scenario where four teams will battle it out to get the top seeds. The top two teams from that seed, from that, uh, excuse me, that qualifier will actually guarantee themselves a place in LAN. And the bottom two seeds will actually have to face off in a gauntlet. Now, that gauntlet will be determined and the bottom two seeds of that gauntlet will come through from an online qualifier that is going to be running simultaneously with the Spring Radiant qualifier. So kind of like some open brackets, essentially, Nick, to run alongside. The top two teams who qualify from that, if you were too late from the early part of it, will now be able to face off in the gauntlet, and those teams will have to battle their ways out to uh, be a part of the LAN. And you can see a lot of money on the line here. It'll be a $65,000 LAN, which means that they will end up getting a lot of cash to support this Paladins eSport, as well as uh, giving teams some money for actually even making it in and not qualifying to the next stage. It's pretty Yeah, and exciting. a big part of that is it's gonna incentivize all kinds of new teams. This is a brand new scene, a lot of talent. We've seen a rise and emerge yeah. right at the end of some of the qualification tournaments, some of the open brackets. The gauntlet was absolutely a light show for this. The qualifying for this tournament was insane. How much yeah. the scene changed in just a few, few short months. Absolutely. So Jaguar Falls, or Jaguar Fools, as Jaguar. my friend says, will be the next map played. This is a very standard map. Frog Isle as well. Very surprised to see the results on the maps these players know and have played on for so long. Nick, Jaguar Falls, what does Burrito need to do to change things up? Uh, this map, the capture point, the area directly surrounding that, very different from what we saw on Frog Isle, so I would like to see Burrito go for that double frontliner composition, but I very I don't see District 69 wanting to give it up. So we see Ruckus coming forward for D69. A lot of 
Very fast pick. Seems like D69 are comfortable with what they have. Unbelievable again. He's played a lot of Ruckus, and he has felt super comfortable on this. Of course, D69's big story here is they had to travel to Atlanta without their captain, their mainstay Bugsy, who now is being replaced by Unbelievable. A lot of question marks about how he would perform, but so far when he's on Ruckus, he is comfortable and he is overperforming. They've been able to get him on that Ruckus very often, very manageable. Easy to play champion for him. A big change up from Burrito's draft here as the Eevee is still on the table. They pick up the Cassie right. and the Shaolin. Shaolin likely to go to Bonker. Cassie likely to go to Eevee. So they're really focusing on getting Lazy something he's comfortable with. Somehow, Eevee makes it through the rest of the draft as well. And Burrito will scoop her up in addition to Ying. So now I think this is so much better for Burrito. Lazy will be on somebody that I think can show off his skill a lot more. The Victor I don't see coming out for D69. It's possible, but I think this is where they can flex a lot of different things. They have the opportunity, we saw it yesterday, not very common, to do double healers. It doesn't feel like that's what D69 want to go for. It seems like this will be a damage flex, but it is. It's double healers pip. Comes through a fan favorite. The Volpine will make its return. And of course, you got to talk about one thing when you talk about pip. It's the evil mojo. Yeah, and unbelievable specifically. That's one of another one of his signature characters, the evil mojo. Pip's big team fight crowd control ultimate will turn everyone that it hits into 1,500 HP chicken. So this is going to be best used against frontliners like Theo. You can see him on screen right now. He's got 5,400 health at base. They want to make him a chicken. They want to make him much easier to take down, and Pip is the perfect character to do that. There's a lot of synergy in D69's draft. Maldamba's Dread Serpent Ultimate gives a 20% damage amplification. Androxus has an AoE blaster for his accursed arm. Pip turns them into chickens with 1,500 health. I don't see them surviving very long, especially with the constant DPS from Ruckus. It's a matter of D69 to execute that plan of strategy, though. And Burrito, a lot of carriers, the Bow Brothers, are there. They're looking pretty solid on this draft, too. Solid, but Wombo Combo, I think, is going to be the name of this game. District 69 having a lot of huge impact team fight ultimates, whereas Burrito, it's not really the case. Ying's Illusory Rift ultimate, just kind of an AoE raid healing type of ultimate. Ice Storm is a great setup, but there's not a lot to drive it home as Shaolin and Cassie just have more utility focus. Host Cassie with the scout revealing everyone from D69. Shaolin just goes invisible. It's still on you to hit the shots. Absolutely. So let's take it into game two here. Bonker on Burrito playing Shaolin. Bird for Eevee, Veal on Makoa, Spunky on Ying, and Lazy on Cassie, trying to get this game back. There, no back on Androxus, Shippa on Pip, Elven Path on Fernando, unbelievable on Ruckus and Jera, rounding things out on Maldamba. Immediately Bird with the blink in, trying to find some backline damage onto Maldamba, the Snake, the Serpent Master, escaped for a moment, forcing the Eevee to get on her Winter Witch broom and take it away, Bonker with a first kill on Shaolin, so far things so good. And for Burrito trouble now is Bird falling lower and lower, will be cleaned up. But Burrito right now is taking control of this team fight. One last member of D69 falls. Burrito seizing control of the capture point this time, already climbing north of 30%. And a complete wipe for D69. Burrito have come back in the way they needed to with all guns Book off flaring the map. and blazing. It is potential here for Theo to continue this. He loves the hooks off the map, but will he find it? He gets one into the shotgun. The cannon is going to do enough work for him. Theo will finish it off. Elven Path is going to take down Bonker in response, though. That Fernando from him playing super aggressive. Insane positioning from Lazy. You see him and Theo like to play that 1v4 bodyguard style, but they're oh. leaving their team susceptible to being picked off in the back line right now. D69 back in control of the point with a couple of key pickups here. Climbing now north of 70, they are surpassing Burrito. This game could go either way. This first point means so much to these teams. Burrito trying to make it back in line, but D69, 96%. There comes Bird onto the point. He blinks in, blinks out. Overtime comes through. So healthy right now is the double front liner from District 69. Theo trying to hold it down. Unbelievable falling lower and lower. Ice Storm comes out from Bird to try and set up a team fight. Oh no, there's the accursed arm by Androxus. Is it going to work? Perdo looks to find one. Theo and Spunky take down Elven Path and unbelievable. The damage comes through in the front liners from D69 are gone. And now 90% for Burrito. D69 are running out of time. Burrito are there. And the objective is capture. Burrito lead this game to 1-0. to zero. Huge impale from Bonker there on the ship at the final moments to take him down. So much crowd control coming out from Burrito Esports right now with the Dredge Anchor, with the Impale, the Disengage, the Ice Storm from Eevee. Another great Dredge Anchor is going to keep District 69 on the back foot. 
They are looking to push now. Burrito found a little bit of rhythm after losing game one extremely convincingly. D69 now having to answer some questions themselves. Pip getting focused out. Unbelievable on the ruckus, but not having the same type of performance as he had prior. Bird has spotted him out. There's a reversal from Androxis. He's going in, but he gets caught by the Makoa hook, and so that's going to put him back to base. He's in a bit of a bad spot here, and Burrito are looking very good. A minute and 38 seconds on the clock, and they're almost halfway. Disjointed, quite frankly. Look, District 69, Spooky takes a spell there from Unbelievable. It appears as though the call is to fall back. Theo's going to try to get out of this one. He's sent back to spawn as well. Wisely, Burrito starting to back up. Modern Group. The name of the game here is not to get staggered. A couple of key ultimates up right now is that Evil Mojo, the chicken pop out coming that we mentioned a little bit earlier in the game. Immortal from Fernando to keep all of his team from crawling below 1500 health for four seconds and a Hexafire as well. Burrito though, back is five strong and ready to fight. This stabilization is so key for Burrito and for D69. They need to find an answer. Both of these teams, so much on this line. 2-0 could mean a game breaker. It could be a deal breaker for D69 if they let Burrito get this type of a lead. So they need to stay calm, solidify this. A nice shot there by Lazy and Theo, though. And Bonker is going bonkers. Takes them down. D69 are falling just as they need to stabilize. Huge job there. Great job staying alive from Bonker and Theo for peeling for him. Burrito find the window that they need to go up 2-0. And they're in the exact same position that District 69 were in the previous game. A lot of margin for error here. Able to benefit from that defense point. Should they lose the payload this round? But it doesn't really look like they're looking to do that. They have three key ultimates. District 69 have all but their accursed arm available as well. Leading the net worth though is going to be Burrito Esports. That's going to be about an item here. So you see that level two record coming out from Bonker. It's going to be easier and easier for him to rip through Fernando Shield, through the Ruckus Shield, as well as the Cauterized Twos coming online for Burrito. So a lot of opportunities to shut down this double support comp from District 69. There's so much that items have to do with this game. In the late game, obviously allowing you to change your entire direction of your fight based on handling certain things like healing earlier on with applying Cauterize. And that's what exactly Exactly, Burrito have been trying to do now to deal with the double healing coming out of D69, and it is playing to their advantage. A nice blink in the back line by Bird, looking for unbelievable. Want to get the sub down. The chickens come out though, and those chickens are getting fried. Birdo, Elven Path, take down Theo and Bird. Lazy follows up, takes down Elven Path though, and this is big for Burrito to stabilize here. As long as Lazy is alive, Burrito have a chance in this team fight. Bonker as well has what it takes to do the damage. That's just the wombo combo though. District 69 should win that fight 10 uh, 10 times out of 10 with all of those ultimate lazy finding another one here the big thing from d69's comp right now is if Perdo falls they're losing uh -oh. so much in their team fight damage uh -oh. so many people on burrito can carry this team fight unbelievable still alive but not for long burrito clean up d69 elven path now starting to come through 21 percent on the objective with 81 percent for d69 so this spells a little bit of trouble nick if d69 can come back onto this point it's almost guaranteed to be there and they're approaching it wisely right now taking their time but Perdo may have overstepped his bounds just a little needs to be so careful he is absolutely paramount to district 69 being able to win this fight he is relatively all of their damage lacy is nine and three conquer doing well himself there's the accursed arm what oh, an immortal by Evan path keeps everybody alive make sure the damage will come through d69 are 99 percent overtime ticking down it's all up to burrito right now they are trying to save this game to save this set to save this finals but it is up to Perdo, the man with the revolver to shut their dreams down and in their hopes overtime ticks away 99 percent on the objective for D69, and they capture it back in this game. Team is fighting ultimate. Immortal plus a cursed arm. Perdo didn't have any worries. All he had to do was land those shots and land them. He did that. Ultimate was able to keep him alive. As you saw, Bonker was trying to take him out of the air, but immune to any further damage was Perdo. Not going down without a fight, though. Burrito know that they are in trouble if they let this tie up at 2-2. Two to two. And District 69, they know themselves that if they do not push this, Nick, they will be actually giving Burrito Esports another point for defending and it will be three to one. A very tough deficit to come from. They know that this push with a minute and 47 seconds left on the clock means so much to both teams. Comes back to that first round conversion. There's so much margin for error. Burrito 
Now with the opportunity to benefit from that defense, but uh -oh. Greg Stranger for the field, but he's in a rough spot here, backed into a corner and finished off. That turtle getting heated up by Fernando and Perdo with the revolver, and Drox is coming through strong. Nice reversal. So you view the damage, 1,100 back onto Eevee. That's going to force Bird out of this fight. He doesn't want to deal with that anymore, and Androx is takes his claim as the king of the skies for now. Lazy falling back, goes down actually, misses the back roll. Again, back against the wall, feel in a rough spot, has the shell shield up, but Fernando's gonna be able to continue to damage him. Nice pseudo front line coming out from Perdo with this reversal. Such a huge cooldown for this flanker. Taking all the damage shot at him during that small time period and reversing it back to his target's headshot. Another step, oh, gets shot in the air. Lazy picks him up, but Steel picks up Dara as well. So two damage, a damage dealer and the healer on the side of D69 is going to go down, and now their tank will fall. Unbelievable will fall. It's so common, Nick, that when one goes, it just starts the domino effect, and D69 elected all die there so they can regroup and have one final chance at this push. They do get the Ancient Rage from Seal forced out. That will heal Makoa from whatever HP he is currently at to 10,000. He drops his cannon, picks up his anchor, and starts swinging lay, able to cleave everyone in front of him for 650 damage a swing. Now five ultimates on D69. 69, Nick, only one on Burrito. Do they use it now or do they save it for the next round? Ult management is so key here. They want to spend as little as possible for both teams on offense and defense because you saw in the last round they were so important to have up for that capture point oh, fight. This is huge though. They got feel. What that means is that now no front line for Burrito. It's going to force all the damage dealers back and it's going to give them a little bit of space. Bird now having to soar away on his staff to get to safety, but Pip is on his tail. He's going to blink back for it and now Burdo will go down. This is huge, but a nice hook will mean that Jera falls as well. A Hexa Fire comes through. Is it going to take down the turtle? Has the ability to drop the ice from here if he wants it oh, right no. now. Burrito barely hanging on by a thread. Bird could be the last hope. The respawns are starting to come through. Five seconds off steel, but a great wombo combo from Bird and Lazy, two of the biggest stars on Burrito. Wow, what a play, what a hold. We talked about this situation prior, but it just means now. Burrito are one capture objective away. Not a defense, you can't get any more points on that, but one capture objective away from scoring. And D69 are gonna have to put their pedal to the metal and get a lot of points fast. Totally worth spending the ultimates there for Burrito because it's the same thing as spending them to capture a point. A point is a point, and they're leading three to one now, but they do need to capture a payload if they're gonna put this game away. Notable ultimates on the board is going to be Perdo with the Accursed Arm. Won't have the backup from Elven Path this time. No Immortal to keep him alive midair as Immortal and Hexafire was used to try and push that through. So all intents and purposes, relatively even in terms of the ultimate spread. Master Riding's coming out to give them a little bit of flexibility on that initial mount phase. Can't get back on it, but the first spot you position to in Paladins means so much to your success. Bird has that in-game positioning with the mobility that Eevee brings. Nice Big AoE shot. damage shot. Gets a lot of damage onto the Ruckus and to the Perdo. There's the ticket, though, but Pip, is he gonna fall? No, the Dread Serpent turns Eevee around. He can't finish off Pip. Elvin Path please Bonker. What a play by Jera to save his teammates, but a Shot by Bird will shut down Elvin Path. Pinned in the corner, just flawless positioning right now from Bird. Finally shut down for, by Perdo, but too little, too late. Back wow. in control of the point is Burrito. 50% was gained there, but District 69 used everything. 51% and climbing for Burrito Esports. D69 need to get back onto this, otherwise it's game over, and it's a tied set. They've got a lot to work with, but no ultimates in the bank. A reversal will be the front line for now, and D69 have finally found some spot out, but Bonker still alive in the back line as Shaolin needs to go down if they want to have a chance. Killer Arrow does not 97. connect on the pair. No overtime is ticking through. Deal falls down from Burrito. D69 looking good for this conversion, but Bird is going to be able there to keep resetting the overtime for as long as he stays oh. alive. Bonker alive the whole time, just dumping arrows into D69. Ice spot from Evie. Is she going to stay alive? No, the Winter Storm comes out, but it's not going to heal anything. She's getting damaged. Bonker is still here. Pips on his tail. The Volpine with the AoE blasting damage. Ancient Rage. Yellow Major Rage, the greatest fate in Paladins, is going to scare D69 off the point and burrito esports have found a bit of respite but not before the immortal comes out so important now when Droxus and ruckus can stay alive and do their damage but lazy back in the fight and he won't give it up without trying but he turns into a chicken it's and they so take him down much time for burrito but not enough the ancient rage not great wow. but it's just used to stall wasn't able to find any damage any kills d69 wisely back off 
using their lead on the capture point as space, giving it up to Theo for free and coming back in once the ultimate had worn off. What's so impressive to me is not the ultimate's use for offense, it's the ultimate's use for defense to keep their teammates alive. It's the Immortals coming out from Elven Pass to make sure the damage from Perdo and Ruckus continues on. It's the saving graces of the Maldamba ult to make sure Pit can stay alive and do what he needs to do after he's turned them all into chickens with his evil mojo. D69 is playing like a team. So much healing coming out from D69 as well. This double support. Shippa stayed alive when he probably shouldn't have. Burrito Esports need to be very careful, spend as little as possible on this defense, save as many ultimates as they can, and get Cauterize 3 online. 90% healing reduction is going to be huge, shutting down this double support. Bonker is absolutely on a rampage right now. 12 and 5, no streaks, just died in that last point fight, of course, but he has been the one that has been hard to stop. Lazy goes down 12 and 11 is the stat line, and Perdo and Shippa as well, 13 and 11, 9 and 10, so none of the big name stars are really showing up to carry this team. It's actually the sub that is coming through and giving Burrito their biggest hope in this one. And as I mentioned his name, a nice impale, some nice damage on both to the tank and the healer. Finally, some respite for Burrito, though. Unbelievable goes down into planet. And Elven Pat taking a lot of damage right now, but he's not yep. scared. He's got a support with him. Wow. Finding the conversion, RD69. When that's not good for Burrito because they were not able to get all five of their ultimates charged for Burrito. This capture point fight is going to be close. And you talk, we talked about this scenario as well. 3-3 three, three now. 3-1 three, seemed like a distant dream for D69, but with the way they're playing, the way they're coordinated, and their land experience, it seems like that is not a flustering point of view for them at all. 3-3, three three, it all comes down to this. Two cauterized threes online right now. One for Spunky, one for Lazy. Wrecker three online as well from Bonker. So these shields are gonna be very, very ineffective from District 69 right now. If this is the fight, it is for Burrito. Late game, the double support, oh. and the double frontliner starts to fall off a little bit. 110,000 damage already? Next highest from Bonker is 80,000. He is playing lights out. D69 are ruining the day that Burrito Esports brought him to this tournament. They're, that is the big struggle they are going to have right now. Elvin Bath, of course, is doing his work as Fernando and being in that front line. Feel already about half health, and he does not have ancient rage. This could mean the turtle dies if he doesn't get back to his teammates, and there he does. Try to provide some safe haven for them under the shell shield. Carter has to start to fall off. Big Dread uh -oh. Serpent, though. Find Spunky. No more healing for Burrito. Lovely Dread Serpent. The fear moves him away from the point. Elvin Bath goes through. He's dead, but he doesn't die close enough to the objective. So no more capture point for D69. Burrito have retaken this despite the ultimates being spent and now are looking to zone. A cursed arm shut down by Perdo. That's the big thing in this team fight. Will not be available, finds no damage, absolutely no kills. Big, big misplay from Perdo. This is so important. Jaguar falls a tight six point. He goes into the reaction. Ultimate. The reaction ancient rage. That pip ultimate is not gonna do anything because of the timing of that. What an incredible interaction. A nice hook there. Elvin Bath goes into trouble. Lazy's on a five streak and he wants to find one. Elvin Bath goes down. This is a lot unbelievable now. Forced off the objective. And Burrito, 96%, 99. They can win the game here, Nick. Cassie's so good at kiting Pip around. Staying alive, gonna be the name of the game right now. Lazy missing a couple of key shots. Reversal pseudo from. Oh! Line, but big reversal damage from Perdo. Don't shoot the reversal, Lazy. Don't you do it. But he does, and Bird takes down Perdo. Finally, after Perdo takes a double kill, there's so much work for Bird to do. And Pip stings him. Sheepa takes down Bird, and Elvin Path is alive. 72% and counting, and D69 are in control. It's gonna be close. Rita will have another wave of respawns right now. Spunky doing a lot of damage. Gonna try and get himself healed back up. Feels here, 200 health. They can't let Unbelievable live right now he's gonna get out of combat and start regenerating. Oh, no, Theo goes down, Spunky goes down. It is looking like all D69's game right now. Lazy gonna have to be a master right now. He's gonna have to carry this team alongside Bonker. The Bow Brothers, can they do enough? Overtime is here. Birdo seals the deal with a double in D69. Take game two in a row off of Burrito. That is not good for morale if you are Burrito right now. Up 3-1 over District 69. It's still unable to find the game win there. Perdo coming in clutch in so many situations, still not even breaking a smile right now. This man is laser focused. You know, this is uh, the score for land between D69 and Burrito Esports, 4-0 D69. They have won every single game 
on Burrito at LAN. And online, it is a completely different beast. D69 doesn't even have their captain here. And this is just an unbelievable story. Speaking of the sub, unbelievable. Playing so well in this game as well. When he's on the Ruckus, 27 and 14, 99,000 shielding, 59,000 damage, but his objective time, Nick, 273 objective time. It's so important right now for Unbelievable to stay on this comfort pick, very easily manage. All he has to sit, do is stay still and shoot Repulsor Field when his team calls for it right now. Yeah. Healing another big factor for District 69, 100K on that Maldamba and a nice little supplementary 25K from Pip. They're blowing Burrito's healing out of the water by about 80,000. Well, Jaguar Falls is the map that D69 take a 2-0 advantage for, but if you're a Paladins fan, we got another map to talk about. Let's go ahead and throw it over to the newest map in Paladins being revealed right now. Stone Keep, what an exciting map, and uh, what a, how about that chicken? We just saw that. That was <laughs> the first time we saw that. Great job by the video department and um, the animation department for putting that together. I'm excited, man. That means we're going to be able to see so much more flexibility uh, in this game, so that'll be coming season one as well. But speaking of maps again, we're back to the set. D69 2-0 over Burrito right now. Number one team in Europe, not having as much success as they thought on land as we've seen before, and Serpent Beach will be where the next game takes place. Serpent Beach the final map and there's kind of Temple Ruins variant, each one kind of filling out a different point in the spectrum in terms of Frog Isle being the most open, Jaguar Falls being <laughs> the most closed in. Serpent Beach Jaguar. is going to be the most balanced. It's not quite as open as Frog Isle, but not quite as closed as Jaguar. There's yeah. high ground surrounding the pole point and kind of a horseshoe sort of maneuver. And so that's going to be very important to control, something to look for in the draft. Unbelievable there, you see his smiling face. He has played so well. He had so many nerves coming into this. Bonker as well on the side of Burrito. Both subs that they had to bring due to visa issues, but they have been performing better than some of the standard members on this roster. And, you know, performance comes down to so many things at Land Nick. It's not just your mechanical skill or ability. It's not just your champion draft. It's your mentality. Absolutely. And that land nerve, something I think affecting both teams a little bit, but the first win is going to do so much to settle that. Burritos still have yet to find their first win, and I think that's going to really start to hurt them later in the series when D69 are feeling confident. They've come, they've had a, a nice stomp in game one right. and a nice comeback. They feel they can do anything at this point. Well, this is what you mentioned to me, and it was very an astute observation. The fact that Abyss ESC, the kind of underdog from Australia that took Burrito to a five-game set, would have won that set if it was best of five, they went 2-1 up. If it was best of three, excuse me, they went 2-1 up. Now, Burrito in a bit of a precarious situation moving forward, but luckily, they've got seven games to turn it around. So D69 still need two more wins before they've secured this championship. All right, backs not up against the wall yet. Big switch up here in the draft, D69 with first pick, and Burrito now have the chance to take the double frontliner and get unbelievable off of this ruckus, and I am gonna be hard pressed to think that they wouldn't do, do so. Do you think they, they first pick ruckus here? <laughs> That would be that would be unprecedented. If you asked me that question a month ago, two months ago, three weeks ago, I would have said absolutely not. Right. But right now, given how much they're relying on this sub playing not just really well, but just well to keep their team in this momentum, I don't think it would be a bad decision. It could be something that, you know, allows them to keep going forward. I love this idea of keeping on your comfort picks, being able to keep doing what is working well, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't I don't think it's going to be the Ruckus first pick because I had a little bit of a conversation with District 69 because this this Ruckus was so interesting to me that it was such an impact pick right now. Mm. Because it, it, they said it didn't come down to just the Ruckus, it came down to just having double frontliner and Ruckus being the better option of the two after Fernando and Makoa. Fish Market and Timber Mill are banned as we mentioned earlier on if you're just joining us and we are in game three. D69 looking to make it 3-0, the number two team in Europe over 
the number one seeded team, Burrito Esports. And they're looking to climb their way back into this. They had a really good showing, Nick. We're up 3-1 in this last map. And D69 pulled a rabbit out of the hat, or a chicken out of the hat, rather, and made it happen. Which is very strange because dro dropping that double frontliner and the double support, District 69's comp falls off late game as the cauterize starts to come online. 90% anti-healing for two seconds, that debuff. And then in combination with that, Bonker had Wrecker 3, 225% increased damage against shield on Shaolin, no Yikes. less, who has a base damage of 1,000. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. But what I love about the double healer that they did there was it forced Burrito to commit to Cauterize. That's a lot of credits that they had to put into that item, and all of them had to do it. Otherwise, they could not cover all of the healing options they had. And that means that you can't put as many credits into Haven. You can't put as many credits in the Blast Shields. You can't put as many credits into Master Riding or Wrecker, all of those other items that play a huge component in this game. All important utility and defensive options are you just saw Bird on screen. The mastermind, the brain behind a lot of what Burrito is looking to do here. D69, go for the Makoa first pick. Quickly yep. answering back, though, is Burrito with the double front line. They have to get it done with this comp. They knew what was going to happen. Makoa now Ooh. is going to be Elven Pass baby for this game. He's played a lot this tournament. He's felt very confident. And I think what's more important is now Bonker will have to perform on somebody besides Sha Lin, who he's had very good games on. That's right, Shaolin, a decent counter to Eevee as well. So putting Burrito in a little bit of a tough spot to pick that up. Maldamba will be the selection for District 69 in terms of their support. Wow. Eric, the double Eric. frontliner is that important to D69. This is pretty exciting, actually, seeing Barrick here. He's one of the tanks that nobody really expected to see, a frontliner that has definitely fallen off the meta after just one bit of nerfs, just a little shade off, off the, the top, top of. a little bit off the top. And now he's he hasn't been played at all. Grover has come into his place. Ruckus has come into his own here. Barrick, the old man, kind of stepping down, but now he's back and on the biggest stage ever. Struggles a little bit in terms of mobility. It requires a lot of setup for Barrick, character that can deploy two turrets as well as its shield, and then his ultimate, a big, strong dome shield. Doesn't do a ton of damage, has a flame turret under it to kind of try and deter enemies out from under it, but the big thing is that it is the strongest shield in the game. 20,000 HP on the Barrick dome shield, so very difficult to break down, but like we mentioned, very momentum-based pick, has to commit to getting in and setting up his tournament, and as a character that struggles a little bit in the mobility department, very, very committal and dangerous. You have to be extremely cautious as to when you go in to try and get set up. I think I like what D69 did here as well. They know that the itemization is going to force them to pick up Wrecker and Cauterize. They can't ignore the Fernando and the Ruckus shielding, and they also can't ignore the Yang healing. So what do they do at the end of the draft? They grab Barrick so that they have as much shield pressure for Wrecker and as much healing pressure as Burrito would have. And quite frankly, District 69's composition does not really favor Cauterize as we get into game here. You see a character like Fernando is going to be able to spread it around. Much more effective bird on that ruckus as well. Bonker on Cassie. Thiel on Fernando. Lazy on Eevee and Spooky. Rounding things out on Ying. And as we start game three here in the finals for Paladins, Birdo on District 69. Sheepa on uh, Shaolin. Unbelievable on Barrick. Elvin Bath on Makoa and Jera will be on Maldamba. And now the fight continues and rages up on the upper rafters. Eevee into a nice block to keep herself safe for now. But first blood goes to Jera. The Gore standing down, giving the passive damage over time to anybody there. And that's an easy trap that Eevee put herself in. Sha Lin on the upper ledge is going to try and do some work. Great rotation from Bird to get down to the point and try and prevent a lot of this setup. Not a lot of capture point gain for either of the team. Burrito currently in control of things, climbing north of 40% now. 21 percent for D69, but all about that rotation from Bird. Shutting down the setup. Unbelievable is going to be very uncomfortable on this pick as opposed to the Ruckus he has been playing all tournament. Unbelievable taking an odd position as Barrick. He's going up top, but usually Barrick wants to get down here in this little nook and cranny. And finally, he takes the damage out. Look at this. This Ruckus is melting. Barrick, he's got the emitter to deal with. A nice hook is going to make sure Elven Bath kills him, but Unbelievable takes way too much damage from Bonker and goes down. And now Lazy doing his usual antics on Eevee, one of the best in the world. 99% for Burrito. It is all up to D69 to stop this. But so much time was Bird on that ruckus. Lazy finding a clutch pickup onto Perdo. He is going to carry a lot of their team fight once again because the double front liner coming out from D69 really hurts them in the damage department. And now 99% again. It is all Burrito for now. Overtime ticking away. 
But it's possible, Nick, that it is just a formality, and it is. Burrito Esports claimed the first point again in another game, third game, to be honest. And now D69 find themselves behind. Unbelievable. Off the ruckus, zero and three on this barrack right now. Very, very important when you choose to go in. And I just don't know if Unbelievable has the experience to be able to recognize those windows when he pop up. Ruckus is a much more manageable pick in terms of he just needs to sit there, shoot, pop his cooldowns when his team calls for it. Barrick is going to rely a lot more on this man's mentality all on his own. Birdo at zero health now. Bird takes him down, and he's on the Ruckus and feeling confident off the Eevee which is where he gave his man of many talents and lazy to do his work on. Finally, he's gonna try to get back to that payload, get a little bit of extra damage mitigation, and it pays off big. Jera looking for the stun on Maldama, just reloading, using that poison to spread damage from afar, and then looking for a crucial stun. He's gonna get it there. Nice stun on the bird, forcing him to advance another stun there by Jera. Oh, is he gonna get a third? Oh, bird jumps over it. Nice job, though, by Jera staying away. Burrito. Cheap of finding huge pickup for District 69 right now. Able to take out Funky as well. Three ultimates on the board for Burrito. Ice Storm, Immortal, and Hexafire. A lot of things to drive this team fight home and get it set up. So very potent Wombo combo. But we have a lot of strong things coming out for District 69 as well. Cursed Arm is ready to go. Heat Haze ready as well. And quite frankly, Pear Doe has been quiet this game. Zero and two. Unbelievable. 0 and four now. Shippa really being the crutch for District 69 right now. Deal and Lazy having a heck of a time dealing with that back line, but they are doing what they need to do. A nice Immortal into the Hexafire again, but the payload is obstructing so much. Bonker does play unbelievable, but Perdo plays Bonker. Now this starts to turn towards Burrito's way. Bird takes down Evan Bath. Lazy takes down Chiba. They don't have Jolin anymore. Perdo up on the upper rafters with a reversal, but he's forced to back away because the damage will continue to go. Mal uh, Maldamba comes through. There is Barricus the Dome Shield, but it's not going to buy him too much time. So much shielding right now. The damage isn't that scary, but the time bought is ever valuable. Unbelievable falling down once again. Bird able to be taken down. Ancient Rage for Elven Path trying to stabilize for District 69. 12 seconds left on the timer. Burrito Esports need to push this through. A 2 0 lead is what they're looking for, but a great hook by Elven Path will slay Bonker, and the Cassie will go down. Lazy, though, doing his job in the upper rafters, but Elven Path says get over here and the defense is successful one to one burrito versus d69 zero and six right now for unbelievable the dome shield play was fine bought the time it needed to do but that's that's pretty much it that's telegraphed it's gonna come out it's not very difficult to execute what else can unbelievable do without this big cooldown right now leading the charge on the net worth is going to be District 69. Shippa far and away on top of that. Wrecker 2 coming out already. So he's going to be able to shred through Bird's shielding, Steel's shielding on this Fernando as well. Jera notably picking up the deft hand. So he is going for a crowd control base build. When Maldamba reloads, he throws his snake. And if it connects, will stun whoever it hits. And so he can just continue to spam this. Shoot once, reload. Shoot once, reload. Just locking down Bird. And that's what they want to do. But will they be given the opportunity? Elven Path on the left-hand side is going to be forced back under the shell shield because Bird is going to tear down through that with this Star Slayer rocket skin. Just going forward, focusing the turrets, and now he's going to move on to the objective. So Burrito will claim the first points in this engagement. That's going to put him on a little bit of a numbers disadvantage, potentially on the upper rafters here. Elven Path goes down, so Bonker, the sub, continuing to perform, taking down the much-needed tank in this engagement with 39% on the objective for Burrito so far. You can see Unbelievable right here just doesn't know what to do. He's going to run up, drop his shield, drop his turret, but this shield from Barrack is the weakest of all the frontliners and will fall momentarily, and now he's just forced to get out. There's nothing he can do. Unbelievable is 0 and 6, and is it going to be 0 and 7? A nice ult will try to save the turret's life, but the man with the beard will go down back to base. And there's Birdo. He's going to join him as well. The King of the Skies falling to the Hunter's Daughter. Jera trying to survive in that gore, but the long-range projectiles of Cassie will find you anywhere, it seems. 99% on the objective for Burrito. Overtime ticking down, and it seems like EU number one seed will go up 2-1 to one against D69. So split up. Lazy, you can see now on a comfort pick on Eevee, largely regarded 
as one of the best in the world. Nice long range elimination there from Bonker and Lazy. So effective at creating space for this payload to push immediately after the capture. Always with the 2v1s up on the high ground. You can see Bonker laying down long distance range fire right now. No damage fall off for Cassie. So she's going to hit that 650 from anywhere on the battlefield. Unbelievable is 0 and 7. His role is to support his teammates though, but he cannot do that if he is dead. He can't do any damage while he's dead as well. And so this is what D69 need to change in their roster. So far, Burrito making things happen, but Chief has been the one on fire. Seven and five, looking to continue this from the back. That arrow takes down the Goblin and the Mech. And so Ruckus goes back to base and forces Burrito Esports to stall out this push. A minute and 37 seconds on the clock. And they're gonna look to regroup and focus this objective down on a different way. Near flawless positioning from Shipa on this shot line, finding shot after shot with no contest. He remained healthy throughout that full team fight. And that does so much for a player's mentality right into the planet. Wow. Huge counter to Bird right now, able to shut him down and stay alive. I'm not even sure Bird had a life when he came down there. He was instantly deleted. And that is the power of Shaolin Shipa doing everything he needs to do to keep his team alive. A minute and six seconds left. And so time is now starting to wane for Burrito. They need to find an answer, and they need to find an answer fast. Deal comes charging in on the Fernando. A nice storm from Eevee comes through. It's going to cripple everyone on D69. Deal takes down Jero, the accursed arm for Burrito. He's going to look to find one. He does. The stabilization is possible. He's got to hit this. A reversal. It hits the rock. It doesn't hit Ying. And Bird is still alive, and Emitter keeps him alive for a second. Can unbelievable track down this ruckus and get his first kill. Barrett not affecting from long range, though. So Bird able to survive for it now. That's huge that he didn't fall lazy. He's gonna be able to maintain pressure on the back line, preventing District 69 from chasing that kill any forward, much less they don't really want to, as the natural design of the map indicates that they want to hold here at their base when the high ground is going to be favoring them. They're looking to continue this, Nick. There's 16 seconds now. There is so little time and so much to do. Barrick, though, getting poked out by Eevee. Great shots by Lazy to put them on the back foot. A lot of healing will take place, but an impale from Chief is going to force Easy Eevee into the ice box. He's going to go on the offensive, though. He doesn't fling back. He goes towards Chief, and this is a beautiful play by Lazy. He's in the back line now. This could be a problem for D69. Looking for the long-range shot. That AoE damage could play so impactful in this fight. He's now on top of the healer, and he takes down Jera. Lazy continues. He almost falls off there, but he keeps himself alive. He's going to take down Shiba with the help of Spunky, but he goes down. Perdo, the king of the skies, is the one who can save this for D69. Erdo trying to turn up the heat on the back line right now. Doesn't want them to free fire into his team. Elven Path falling extremely low. Disengaged though. Back to his team. Still able to find the Perdo. shot. Erdo flanking from around the side. He's doing it. He needs to do it. Sheepa's there as well. Bird goes down. Double kill for Sheepa. Perdo gets the most important kill of that round and allows his team to fall back after the respawns and clean this up two to two. Both of these teams are so even, Nick. It's disgusting. One thing both teams do well is keep the pressure on the back line. see any time one of them is able to free fire, once it was Shippa, the next time it was Bonker, and they quickly shut that down. Whenever there's free fire, whenever there's no pressure on you, these guys are going to land their shots. You have to make them uncomfortable if you want them to miss. You see their faces there. They're discussing there's so many important decisions to be made in this fight. Where do you go? Last time we saw Unbelievable take the high ground as Barrick. It didn't work out for him. And if he's got that master riding, which he does, he's going to look to get onto the point, I would assume, this time, unless his team makes a call for him to go otherwise. It seems like they are grouping up on the right-hand side again, looking to secure this upper ledge from which to fight from. And Teal taking a lot of damage. That shield melts it. Oh, boy. Wrecker's coming through hard now late game. It's Eevee. It's Sheba. They're going back and forth against each other. Lazy's got the blink. I know that he wants it again. He might come through. There it is. Lazy gets the kill on the Sheba. And now playing with Eevee, he's going to force Unbelievable, who's on a 13 streak, despite being 2-7. and seven. Back away from the objective with 54% for Burrito. Able to tag at least participate in some of these eliminations. Ice Storm is good. He's going to look for the lockdown on Unbelievable, trying to take out the substitute player while he's uncomfortable. Great job getting out as well. And Bonker able to find a follow-up as Lazy is commanding so much attention on the front line. Deal takes the opportunity to go and help his back line, but it leaves Lazy exposed nice and Elf Path gets a hook and Immortal. It's not going to save everyone, especially not going to kill anyone. It's going to keep his teammates alive for just a moment. 
But will that moment be long enough? Bonker does play Elven Pass. Within that time, Immortal was active, but Unbelievable is back here. The double tank not being enough to stain, but there's the Dread Serpent. A good time Dread Serpent as well. The Slither comes through. Maldamba cannot last. Those immunity frames are only so long, and with overtime ticking away, Nick, 99% again, only Elven Path can contest here. Forced in a rough spot as well. He's looking like he's going to be cleaned up. Overtime ticking down. District 69 wow. is forced to trickle as Burrito looks to close out their third capture of the game. And right now, District 69 showing they can hold on defense every time, but you can't win off the defense. You have to show some ability to capture payloads to win. I'm not a fan of taking the upper ledge like that. I think Unbelievable needs to go straight to the objective. That's what Barrack is for. That's why you get Master Riding. You go to the objective, you lay down your turrets first, you make two things to shoot at for the opponent, and that is where you cause problems. You throw your shield, you buy some time, and you just sit at home. He is the stay-at-home dad of Paladins, and he needs to do that role a little bit better. Two and 10 so far on the stat line. But here it is, Bonker going in with a 10 streak. Cast Dodge rolling away, and Burrito are a minute and 55 seconds in, Nick, and 50, 60% pushing this payload. Doing a great job keeping all of District 69 staggered right now. Lazy continuing to find picks in the back line. Keeping them on the back foot is going to be so important. Elven Path goes down as well. Burrito rounding the final corner here. Perdo is extremely weak, but does have the reversal available. Uh-oh, Perdo is in trouble here. He needs to stay alive. He's got Lazy fighting him. Lazy takes down Perdo. Nick, this could be the end of the game. Lazy, he needs to zone here, and he's doing a great job of it. It airs so close, only 5% away. The Ice Storm comes out. Burrito Esports claim game number three and make this a two to one set. They're not going down without a fight. You can see the size of release. Lazy shaking his hands. This guy plays on a high sensitivity, very twitchy. And it's good to just get shake it out, get the nerves out. You guys did it. You took your first game. Now let's get back to the burrito we're so used to seeing and start taking some games. You sound like their coach, man. I feel like I feel like all that bonding going down is helping you. To Just trying to get us the game seven, baby. Let's go. <laughs> we have a great show that we've been putting on so far. These two teams from Europe. Both are just so fantastic, not only in their play styles, but in the history between them. Uh, the land upsets by D69 so far looking that way here, but Burrito stake their claim. They say, no, 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 we're gonna win a game against you. This is the first game Burrito have ever won against D69 on land, and they're changing the atmosphere here. You could see that there's a little bit of a sigh of relief. There's a little bit of momentum now being built for the boys on Burrito. And before we get into the final game, potentially here, not potentially, but the final game after this, we have a little bit of a reveal we're going to be doing for a new skin coming up, Nick. That's right. We saw some great great Ying play from Spunky yep. in that last game here. We'll see a new skin that he's going to be able to rock in the realm. Ah, feels good to stretch my legs again. <laughs> my power is at your disposal, Master. There is no turning back. My power grows. Shatter. Break. <laughs> what? Splendid! Unrival cosmic power! Welcome back, everybody, to the High res Expo 2017. We're back here over at the Analyst Desk, guys. And, you know, we had three great games so far. District 69 coming out strong in games one and two. But I do have to say, looking at game one, the trend throughout this whole thing, fellas, has been Ruckus. Oh my goodness, Ruckus has been huge. And the big thing about it is both teams prefer them, but Unbelievable is undefeated on playing Ruckus. That's, that's unheard of. It absolutely is insane. The substitute coming in, adopting a completely different role. I mean, they played a lot of Fernando before. We didn't see them on Ruckus much during online play. Of course, Ruckus only really coming to the forefront of the LAN meta very recently, but now is really running away with this pick. Yeah, so, the other big yeah. thing too is the Eevee, which is strange. We saw we saw Lazy playing Eevee throughout the quarters and the semis and not playing Eevee until just that last match, which was really interesting, Gold Boy. You know, when I look at the scoreline, what this shows me here, kind of what our casters are saying, you know, over on the balcony there was that Burrito really needed to get their bearings together, right? Uh, you look at that first one, District 69 comes out strong. That game ended really quick, 4-0, boom, done. Then District 69 had a bit more of a challenge in front of him, 4-3 on that score line there. And now Burrito, a top team coming back into top form, not to count out District 69 quite yet, because I do feel like the Ruckus pick played a big role for Burrito in that victory. 
And it's been a big pick for a lot of teams throughout the entire tournament. The other thing as far as big picks is that really I have my eyes on Thiel right now, who's been playing Makoa throughout this tournament. He's played him in eight of their nine matches. He's only lost two, and he really kind of choked in map two. To be completely honest, in that last one, he was off by himself a lot. And that's something we don't see from Brito, who's usually so comprised. No, while Thiel does like to play that flanker style of Makoa, they get into the back line. He's not one for missing a lot of dredge anchors. That setup potential is so important. And to see Thiel just really drop the ball there led uh, Burrito to fall again in, as you said, maps one and two. Back on Ruck, uh, excuse me, back on Fernando now, augmenting the Ruckus, providing a shield, which we saw during one of the objective captures to keep a Ruckus alive at such low HP. He feels like he's a little bit more comfortable there against the wild card of District 69, which has come in with unmatched aggression. And a lot of that aggression comes from, again, the combination of these certain players on the roster and their key picks. Perdo and Androxus is incredible. He's won seven out of the eight matches he's played on. The same thing with Elven Path in the front line, and of course, unbelievable on uh, his ruckus. But the other interesting thing is we've seen Barrick now three times, and Barrick is 0-3, <laughs> which is interesting. Yeah, maybe <laughs> try and dial Barrick back, perhaps it's you know, get him out of the equation there. One thing I do want to discuss in game two that I found to be particularly interesting for District 69, you saw a lot of direct damage for Burrito, right? Uh, you know, they have the Cassie, they had the Shaolin, they had, um, like, yeah, the Cassie and the Shaolin most notably uh, with the just heavy damage that they were uh, pushing forward there. District 69's response at the end there was to pick up Pip. That was their that was their response, and at first it didn't look like it was working out too hot. It, they struggled a bit more because they didn't have that damage output that you would typically see, especially with Burrito's composition. Right. Why go with the pip there? Why not just go ahead and and pick up somebody else that could put out a little bit more damage? I think when you look like at a what, Victor. Yeah, yeah, Vic, that was the interesting pick from game one, and I think when you look at what the overall last pick is, you you have some options. You know, they could have. We you heard Rain Day and Prettier talking about would it possibly be a Victor, but the pip is interesting because. That explosive flask that does that big area of slow, plus, of course, the evil mojo, that big polymorph ultimate, it can control space so well. And when you're dealing with characters that thrive off finding individual duels like Cassie and Shaolin, and even Ying with the dimensional link, if they're not able to get that movement, I think it really cripples them a lot and in one-on-one -on -one situations in particular. And especially on a map like Jaguar Falls yeah. for the second map that came up, it's such a limited area of space, especially fighting around the objective capture. You're often fighting in tunnels and corridors, so Explosive Flask hits everybody if you hit a big group. I do also want to call out the Evil Mojo for Pip, the ultimate which we saw come into play several times. And I feel like Pip was a safer pick right there against Burrito's team composition that only had one frontliner. I think I'm going to throw this back to one of the group stages matches where we saw Resilience, an item come out, which reduces the duration of crowd control, completely countering out Pip's evil mojo back in that phase. And picking that into a double frontliner was a risky Pip. It backfired on District 69, but against one frontliner and four, well, very squishy champions, it was a far cry away from that. Yeah, and the other thing on top of that is the fact that for District 69, they like to favor characters like Ruckus and Androxus, which gets countered out by Haven. Pip has that blast damage, that area damage. So he can bring a lot of damage to the table too. And I think that's really what Diz69 was looking for with that final pick. All right, guys. Well, it's time to go into our next game. Game number four between Burrito and District 9. And right away, Burrito is going to secure themselves that Makoa pick. Fernando going for D69. Yeah, the Makoa is, again, Feels Big's favorite. You see him on screen. He's feeling confident. He's rocking. They're really getting their mojo put back together. But again, this Fernando Ruckus combination has been so devastating. And like clockwork, we see Burrito locking in Shaolin and Eevee. And I love this combination together in combination with Makoa as well. Dredjanka interplanted, is set up, and kill potential works very well against Androxus, which District 69 again pick up for Purdo. Yeah, and again, I'm interested to see what happens with this Eevee pick for Burrito, simply because now Lazy and Bird has really come to life on this Eevee as well. And she's, Eevee's going to go well here. She's got a lot of nice targets to hit at. Ruckus is rather stationary. Cassie has the opportunity. The Pip is the interesting pick here, though. It's double support for Burrito. Maldamba and Pip locked in. Two huge teamfight ultimates available, but this just screams to me resilience. Yeah. Oh. And I think we're going to see a recurrence of that again. They're looking to keep that sustained, right? Stay alive as much as they possibly can there because Ruckus is going to output so much damage. Guys, you got a prediction here real quick. Who you have? I honestly, I have to get this one to Burrito because of the map and the pip. 
I'm going to completely disagree. I do get it to <laughs> District 69. I think that itemization is going to be crucial. And if District 69 can last until late game, they're going to come out swinging. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead. Jump right into game number four. Burrito, District 69. Paladins on the main stage. Casters, over to you. Oh, what a draft we've seen there. I'm actually with Vox here. I actually think D69, if they itemize correctly, I do think we could see resilience prioritized here. I'm not sure how Europe is feeling about it, but that item that could allow you to get out of Pip's ultimate basically two seconds earlier, allow you to avoid that slow from the explosive flats, I think that could come big into play, and they do not have the type of front line that D69 does. I stand with Alan on this one. I think that Elven Pass and District 69's hard-headedness might prevent them from picking up those resilience. You can see not electing to go into those defensive items just yet, so we'll have to see who gets the right call on that one. And we're starting game four here at the Paladins Invitational. It's two to one. D69 leading against Burrito. Burrito trying to make a big comeback play here with Ice Mines in particular. This map is a beast of its own and the players know this and they're gonna have to play in a very specific way with these tight corridors and these long lanes to push down 15 percent so far on the objective for d69 lazy looking at poke here gets poked out himself bird oh slays lazy early on and now he does not see bird but now he's got him in his sights and bonker slays Perdo. the double team working to finish off but d69 all the while 57 percent and counting on the objective burrito are back against the corner here gonna need to find a pick one way or the other they have nowhere to go pincered out by district 69 shippa credited with both of those kills elven path cleaning up the last one spunky no one from burrito oh. is going to be able to make it back in time a lot of poke damage coming out from lazy but this first payload is going to go the way of district 69 e 69 win this game without ultimates guaranteed but now when they fight next at the objective point with the ultimates the evil mojo in particular that is going to be what seals the deal of course you don't see those resiliences picked up now but they knew the ultimates wouldn't be online nick for the first round so they grab the cauterize instead and that comes to play in their favor two minutes and six seconds on the clock and d69 is pushing this down ice mines which is very very hard to do unbelievable back on his signature ruckus that he's so comfortable with Spunky going down as well. Unbelievable credit with that killed on the high ground. Oh. Perdo losing the duel, missing a couple of key shots and Bird able to clean him up. Perdo falling a little bit behind in the duel, but Pip, of course, such a good duelist. He has the sustain from healing potion. He's got the slow from explosive flash. And of course he's got 600 per potion that he's throwing on you and that is not gonna last about a 800, 800, 2,000 health androx is very long. And so, of course, the push continues despite a little bit of a stall here by Burrito doing a good job on this pit. Long range Keep burst damage. Impaler arrow came out and Bird was able to clean up Sheepa as well. Ice Storm is ready to go at a moment's notice for Lazy right now. Poking out unbelievable lower and lower. Forced into the ice block. Could go down here, but Source just barely onto the high ground. Nice job, too, to force Lazy into the ice block early. Bird will take down Elven Path. He's been so close using that damage over time that Fernando has with his Flame Lance to take Lazy down. Of course, if he just touches him with that and Lazy is under 100 health, that dot will kill him. So he needs to make sure that he ice blocks with at least 100 health or less. Otherwise, Fernando could seal the deal even if he's able to blink away. Taking favorable positioning all on the high ground right now. Burrito having the chance to feel out. D69, a big reversal. Won't get the kill on the field. Bonker able to find the time shot perfectly and take Perdo down. Elven Path looking to mix things up and break up this back line from Burrito. Bird needs to be dealt with here. He's going to go for the 1v1 again, but Unbelievable is going to force him away. Here's the ultimate. Can D69 bait it enough? They may just hear Bird is in a lot of trouble. He goes down next to Sheepa and unbelievable on the upper ledges. Now Lazy Force back. Look at this four. four. Help! Lazy stays alive but goes down eventually. Bonker takes down Elvin Bath, but Sheepa is on a rampage here. Four streak, two kills in a row for Sheepa. Ten seconds left, and D69 are pushing this payload. Last chance to dance here for D69. All five ultimates available. Going to be very interesting to see how they approach this. Lazy having just used Ice Storm. Trying to get that as charged as possible for the next round coming. Overtime ticking away now, Nick. It's all up to this. They've got to make this push, and they cannot step away from the payload. This could mean so much. A 2-0 on Ice Mines is almost certain defeat for Burrito, unless they could do the same, which is a very tall task. Ultimates come out now, and they are forcing a lot. There's the Evil Mojo. They forced it in this fight. This is a win already for D69. They're trying to find Lazy. Burdo in the air with the accursed arm. Double kill for Burdo. He's going to find one. Holy moly, D69. Push it in, 2-0 on Ice Mines.
so much room now created. They have plenty of time, plenty of margin for error. They have everything in their court. D69 looking so confident there, winning in terms of value between ultimates as well. And they use the evil mojo. I mean, this is unbelievable. They don't have that anymore. That's one of the reasons you pick Pip for this objective capture, and they don't have that go-to trump card. So huge ultimate still on the board for D69. Immortal from Fernando and Scout as well. Illusory Rift from Jera. They're just leading in terms of raw ultimates. Three to two. Heat Haze and Ancient Rage, all that Burrito are going to be bringing to the table in this fight. But unbelievable going into the Blast Shields. Won't be going for that resilience like we thought, so the Evil Mojo is still going to be fully effective against this Ruckus. They feel like they don't need it. Bird has not been effective with the Evil Mojo. He's been a great duelist, but not in these point fights. And they know he doesn't have it again, so they're halfway through the game. No need to itemize into it now. But now the zone does come through for Burrito. Very good job. Elven Path has not made his way onto the point yet. Unbelievable with the Ruckus, despite the Master Riding, is nowhere to be seen, but Sheba! He's found and he's gone taking a kill down. He is taking down the frontliner for Burrito. An unbelievable fall of suit taking down the Spunky. Bonka finds one kill on the ship, but has the Impaler arrow queued up. Looking for Perdo as he comes around the corner, finds the stun, but the body block and the shield from Fernando is going to hold this down. District 69 just looking invaluable with this double frontliner climbing north of 60%. 60% on the point. There's a the Nightstorm comes out from Lazy. He's looking to make sure Perdo is caught in it, but he's not. The Nether Steps are real, and now Bird versus Perdo. Who's going to win this one? A nice healing potion will immune the damage, essentially, from the reversal. And now it is Perdo looking in trouble, but he's got another step again. He hides behind, getting healed by the Ying clones. This is such good positioning, not only by the Ying, but by Perdo. Not in the line of sight and still healing up. But Spunky spots him out anyways. 90% for D69, but will it all crumble here? Finally going their way. This team fight being taken by Burrito. 66 and climbing on the capture point. As long as the zone is there, Burrito will capture this payload but they have a long way to climb. They have the pace set on them now. They need to find this conversion or District 69 will profit a point in this round as well and have the chance to close out this game in the next round. In many ways, defending can be easier on ice mines than going on the offensive. And having a tied round here is so good for Burrito. They can go up three to one, whereas D69, excuse me, D69 can go up three to one even if they just defend this point. And so Burrito are staring a needed push in the face right now. If not, their journey at HRX could be coming to a close very, very quickly. Elven Path takes out Thiel, and that's worth noting as well because Thiel having an extremely long walk back from spawn right now. Jera goes down as well, so the push will continue to roll. That's very important here. Burrito not needing their frontliner. Kind of in the interim between spawn waves. Lazy on a seven streak. That's what they need out of the man who is carrying in this team. But he goes down thanks to Perdo. You cannot count this guy out. His Androxus is one of the best in the world. And he's looking to find more targets for that revolver. The long push on Ice Mines with a minute and 25 seconds left is continuing for Burrito. But right now they have been staying away. D69 doing everything they need to do. Showing himself though, moving out for this flank. Burrito gonna spot this out. Dredge Anchor going to miss, however, in the midst of those nether steps deal. Getting a little trigger happy, popping that what could have been a little early. Big planted cooldown coming out from Shaolin as well. Lazy in the back line, trying to find a pick. Elven Path tries to respond, but a Dredge Anchor is gonna pull him back to the front line. Four seconds for the shield to come back up. Dread Serpent comes through, 119 health. Steel goes down, Elven Path is on his tail, and he takes down the frontliner. 50 seconds on the clock and Lazy is one of the only remaining members here from Burrito who is continuing to push this. He's gonna soar out of danger and allow D69 to stall this push yet again, Nick. They need to do something and they need to do it fast. Burrito gonna be very, very staggered at this point because Bonker just now respawning. Won't be with this push for another 10, another 15 seconds. Gonna put Burrito in a must-win situation. Lazy's gonna blink onto the high ground now, just trying to find pop shots anywhere that he can, soften something up, but District 69's positioning is looking very flawless. There's Fernando on the EV. This is 10 seconds left. Burrito Esports needs to make their push, and they need to make it now. Evil Mojo is ready. Will the chickens come out? Deal up on the upper ledge. Is a nice stun there. Onto the ruckus. The emitter comes 
goes through another stun onto the Ruckus. The Pip is going through, but will he die? He does. Elven Path, an unbelievable holding it down, and that is going to be overtime. Slowly ticking away for Burrito. D69 go 3 1 up Elven on Path. Ice Mine. Flawless job there, just terrorizing the back line, picking up two He's smiling. in that engagement. He is happy. This guy is known for his aggressive front line play deal. Sitting at 07, I think 0 and 8 now as he did fall in that last fight, not hitting the mark on a lot of these team fights. Items starting to come through for both squads as well. A lot of master riding as you can see because it is such a long way from their spawns to get to the point or to reinforce a push. It's gonna be very important for these guys. Should they die to be able to get back in a reasonable amount of time? Cauterized twos online for Burrito, but District 69 already getting the Cauterized three online for Elven Path. He's been a terror in the back line. 90% healing reduction for everyone that Fernando hits. And you mentioned the dot that his weapon applies. That will continue to apply this Cauterized debuff. And it really does come down to Bird here. Will the evil mojo prove to be successful? But he gets focused here by Elven Path. He could solo ult the king, and that could do a work, but they still got Ruckus to deal with. I know they want to get that dream ult. There it is. There he goes. He goes for it. One shot, two shots. They do take him down. Bonker and Bird come to go together and finish off the big tank. But again, Elven Path is dead, but Unbelievable is still alive. Ruckus on the objective still for D69 with 42% and counting. Herdo demanding an answer in the high ground in Burrito's face right now. Unbelievable just sitting on the objective the entire time. Burrito have to find a way to get in here. Hexafire is going to say, not uh not today. And now the problem is they bought so much time. Elven Path will be back on the Fernando, even if Burrito can overtake this now. 93%. There is absolutely no way they can stop getting on the point. Bonker and Thiel get two kills, though. But Elven Path is coming in to tell Burrito needs to stay alive here. Reversal's available. Preemptively, he uses it, but he goes down lazy with a double kill. And Burrito Esports have reclaimed the objective. 25% and counting, D69 only have to step on it though. But 93 and Elven Pass is hiding out in the mines. As you can see his silhouette right there. So he'll be ready to mobilize at a moment's notice. Great oh. stun comes out around the corner. And this zone isn't very strong from Burrito. They are being extremely careful, not moving out, not creating a lot of space. D69 have a shot at taking this back. This is important. The shell shield comes out. A slither into the wall. This could be trouble though. Deal takes down Elven Path. That's huge. Unbelievable goes down. Red Serpent coming out from Spunky. And that's going to seal the deal. There's only one left in Jera Falls to the Snake Master and Burrito Esports. Get it back two to three with a chance to tie it up and push the payload. Great Dread Serpent there. Zone control so important because they didn't have the space created out in front of them. That's just the advantage you get when someone's coming for a take back. These 69 have to come through right then because overtime was ticking down. They had no choice. Spunky taking full advantage of it. No one is playing exceptional here. All of these teams so evenly matched. The best players in Europe from Bird, Theo, Bonker, Lazy, and Spunky to Perdo, Sheepa, Unbelievable, Elvin, Bath, and Jera, all masters in their own right at this game and playing a non-stop back and forth battle here on one of the toughest maps for Paladin's Ice Mines. It seems that no one has found the clear victory stance yet. But this will be a telling tale if Rita are able to push this Lazy through. Lazy dropping a huge kill in the back line. Had so many opportunities to take down Jera. Doesn't get the kill and goes down himself. So Burrito lose a lot of momentum. Starting to crumble now with Lazy dropping so far in the back line. A lot of key misplays. Missed a few shots. Missed time to reload as well when he had another window to take it down. And Burrito going to be on the back foot. You know, we don't talk about Fireball being so imperative here on Ice Mines enough. But Fernando, what Elven Path is able to do, he's 12 and 7, Nick. That Fireball to be deadly here in these close corridors. Absolutely. As Burrito clump up to try and make their way onto key points in this map, he can fireball all of them. It's a very big projectile. As it hits more targets, it scales up in damage. Can win a team fight if he hits all five of them. It will be so, so low HP after eating that big cooldown. D69 want to save this off because if they can do, Burrito will not gain another point. D69 will not win if they defend. They have to go to the next round. The game must be won on a capture objective fight. And so they know they can still have two more chances at this thing if they just stop them here. And so far, that is exactly what they're doing. Perdo on a third, on a three-three. Make that a four-three. 
Androxes cannot be stopped here. Theo missing a very clutch dredge anchor onto Pair Do. That just goes to show you how one cooldown can change a whole fight. Theo hits that dredge anchor there, cleans up Pair Do. Pair Do doesn't get that double kill. Burrito continue to push, maybe find that conversion right then and there. Every cooldown, every shot matters so much in these team fights. And this is the problem of Ice Mines. How long has it taken for them to even see the payload? There's almost no chance for them to get to it now before the clock runs to zero. And that is why these games are so imperative. A 2-0 lead means you get to do that on the easier side more times than any team. And that can make all the difference here leading into such an imperative set for both teams. So not really leading in terms of ultimates is Burrito right now, despite four of them being up. You can see so close to being fully charged is Scout, is Hexafire right now for both of these characters. Damage dealt, still going to be led by Shaolin. Master Riding starting to come through, but those are still at level one. These Cauterized threes are coming online for D69. Everyone has Cauterized online right now. Perdo, the only one without rank three. So Anti-Heal is going to be the name of the game, and rightly so as Burrito have the double support. It's so important to see what Elven Path does in this initial fight. He has that Fireball, and he's got Master Riding too. He's going to be one of the faster ones here. Is he going to go for the aggressive play? He does. He steps onto the point. He finds the fireball. He has two. This is huge. Lazy's poked out from behind. And so he is going to stay a little bit. This is perfect for No. The Androxes can go to the back line and start farming. But he's going to push back because Elvin Zap takes a little bit too much poke. Lazy with the blink in behind. And Androxes falls. The chickens come out. Will they find a kill? Though nobody knows. Oh, they do not. And though D69 have been pushed back, that evil mojo was not a lot of value. Elvin getting a little ahead of himself, taking a lot of damage, riding in with that master riding. Huge pickup in the back line, though, from Lazy, shutting down Pear Doe. That's really what won the team fight for them. It was just clean up at that point. Bird pops the evil mojo as well, picks up the tanks, and now you can see how dangerous, how huge the zone is from Burrito. No one from District 69 is able to get back on the payload, and Burrito tie it up 3-3 three to three with the chance to close it out. They didn't even see, they, they couldn't even sense to where the payload was. They were so far away. They needed MapQuest to get there, and by the by, D69 are tied now with Burrito Esports, and this is what it all comes down to, Nick. Defending could be a lot easier than attacking here, but Burrito Esports have guaranteed themselves a chance to win this game now. Red Serpent coming out, trying to get things rolling for Burrito, but Spunky drops down immediately afterward. Unbelievable, was able to escape with his life, coming back to haunt Burrito right now as Lazy's unable to get out after picking up Pardo with District 69, looking to hold around the capture point, and this the payload conversion is so far away right now for District 69. They can hold wherever they feel most comfortable. Exactly, and here's the most impactful part. They can basically make that zone, like you mentioned, anywhere. And so if they are able to stall one of these and continue that forward pressure, it could mean that we're definitely going to a 4-3 game. But right now, at that next capture objective, it's a long way away for D69. They know they've got to stop this here. This is the most important thing. Lazy Thiel and Bonker going ham on Florido. And now D69 are really letting this push. They could have held it anywhere, but strangely, they choose to just do it kind of out in the open and being very punished for it right now. District 69 drop all five members for nothing against Burrito. Burrito now the chance to get set up, find some favorable high ground and positioning, looking for a dredge anchor is Theo. This could be the uh -oh, game. Uh -oh. If they continue to snowball this, there is not a lot of synergy by D69 right now. I don't think they expected to lose that capture objective and they have got to get themselves back. A nice hook by Theo. Is it going to take down Elvin? It does. They've got no tank. Will they take down the healer as well? No healer. Burrito Esports could push this thing to the end, but <sighs> Theo falls and without a tank, that is too tall of a task for Burrito Esports to really move on. Lazy can do his best to stay alive, but that is not going to allow them the front line they need to push this through. And with 23 seconds, it's just a matter of time. I think Burrito a little bit scared right now to drop these ultimates because it will all come down to the capture point if they're unable to convert here. You cannot win off the defense. District 69, should they hold here, will force a final round. Who can force whose ultimates? Will D69 get scared enough and use theirs in response? Bunch. Will Burrito Esports use theirs to secure and fail to get the payload to conversion? Those are the questions that these two teams 
need to answer now. Overtime is ticking away. It is anybody's game. Whoever steps off the payload will be punished. And there's an impale arrow by Shaolin. A withdrawal will put him invisible and have him to face off up in the air. Planted there. A Don roll over the top by Sheepa will secure the kill. And the defense will be successful. The acrobatics from the hunter's daughter will claim the defense for D69. Sheepa with just the favorable positioning there, able to free fire into the back line every time he's able to do that. District 69 find the win. As we get into the final round here, you can see unbelievable with the master riding three. He will, without a doubt, be the first one to arrive at the point, getting set up. Net worth all led by District 69, not by much, however. So items basically equalized here. Ultimates all five for Bar or for District 69. Dread Serpent, the only one off cooldown, but not by much. You can see he's sitting at 87% charge right now, so will be a factor in this fight, just not at the start. Sheepa on the back line. He needs to capitalize and pick off the low health targets. Unbelievable up front. He's going straight to the upper rafters, trying to find where they will be. The scout comes through. Cassie knows where they are, and so now Thiel is able to go ahead forward, and they know there's no pressure on the back line. This is very good information for Burrito, but what will it do in terms of the objective zero zero so far unbelievable the first to step on it and he's going to expose himself to a world of pain but will it be a hook from Theo? that's what he wants the dread serpent comes through emitter is popped the gourd is popped as well and oh no helmet bath is only immortal and the exafire combination will put in a world of hurt for burrito esports but so far they've got the lead the chickens come out spunky and bunker and bird take the kills and d69 are looking like they can't even contest on this objective d69 found no Nothing with that huge combination there. Hexafire and Immortal came out just too early. Theo was able to shell spin away, keeping himself alive, just using the map. Wasn't forced to use Ancient Rage there. Comes back in and terrorizes them for it. D69 will have plenty of take back potential. Now, however. the problem is they did not step on the objective earlier on. So now it's only 72%. They've got plenty of time to get back on. But slowly, that time is running out. Lazy pressuring unbelievable. He has no idea what to do. You guys, you're going to lose the game if you don't step on this objective. And they did. Two to two is the score. D69 and Burrito Esports are taking this to game five. S of Seven, the name of the game here. Who will hold on longest mentality? Is this starting to break, or was that just bumps of confidence for himself? Feel <laughs> smacking himself in the head. Great play from the frontliner, baiting out the combination. Arguably what could have won the game for Burrito there, not finding anything off the back of the Hexafire and the Immortal Feel pounding his chest. Well, it's two to two. Both of these teams have climbed back from deficits in their time. D69 had the advantage. Burrito now even things out. Let's head back to the analyst with Golden Boy and break this thing down. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, wow. What a game do we have here, folks. Burrito managed to come back, tying this one up two to two. Gentlemen, wh where do we even start here? Because there's so much to break down. Uh, we'll, we'll just start with you, Chef. So the whole thing for me, and this is immediately after I, I made my pick with you, I turned over and I go, eh, the resilience is going to come out, isn't it? And it didn't. It didn't. Why? Okay. So when we look at it objectively, we, we can look at a few different things here. District 69 immediately went into a lot of cauterize, a lot of anti-heal uh, item, itemization. The right. primary reason for this is because they don't feel it valuable enough to invest too heavily into one of the defensive items, including resilience, because there is such a big damage type split between direct and AoE on the side of Burrito that it was a case of, well, we can just get our counter cards up faster. We can start to shut down the double support healing, and that was more valuable. And initially it was. I mean, District 69 came out swinging, and you could see that Elven Pass was rushing into Cauterize 3 very, very early on to try and help all this out, but it just wasn't enough in the end. Yeah, and that's where it comes down with Bird, I think, is probably the MVP so far for Burrito as far as coming back after that huge sweep from game one, good to get 4-3, winning 4-2, hanging on to that last 4-3, and as we move to Frozen Guard, it's going to be interesting to see what the Birdman pulls out this time. Yeah, well, they decided to go with that double support going into this one. Lots of healing, and as we mentioned before, just lots of sustain to keep them in that fight. Uh, also, the polymorph, too, was huge. That polymorph on Ruckus to really open up that final point just gave that opportunity for Burrito. They capitalized on it. That was very well done. But I do want to highlight something, though. This is the first time that Ruckus has lost all <laughs> tournament. And, and most notably, this is the first time that Ruckus and Androxus 
have lost all tournaments. So because we can't even forget about the Androxus and how valuable that has been. So that just shows some great, great perseverance from Burrito. And the other side of it too is why is Burrito allowing Perdo to get Androxus? They won. Unbelievable. So they, they won. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? I mean, uh, the, the caster said it right. Perdo, I think I could definitively say, is the best Androxus in the world right now. He is absolutely lights out, no matter what the situation. If it's with a team, greater cursed arms, or the biggest thing where he shines is getting a kill and then using reversal to, again, get that another step back up and close another kill. And you'll see that as a card, which Perdo always runs in their loadout for Androxus. Power of the Abyss 4, when you hit that successful reversal projector, onto anything like a deployable or a shield or a player, and you'll often see Perdo prioritize hitting the shields over it because they're easy to hit. You set the cooldown of Nether Step by 100%, can escape, fly off, do some more da damage. It's so valuable. But Burrito, they've always been a team that's all about adaptation. They pioneered the zoning playstyle very early on, and I feel like they let Perdo have Androxus because they draft so heavily into Makoa, and Dredge Anchor is such a good counter to that reversal. Yeah, especially when Thiel's finding the correct targets. Uh, early on, he was not, A, finding he, he targets. He was struggling. He was B, struggling. He was finding the wrong targets. And yeah. near the end of that fight, he started getting into a spot where he can get some of those squishier mid and backliners. And that's really huge when you can get that initiation and your team can really get that first early on odd man advantage. That's where Burrito's successful. And one thing that we were talking about while the game was going on was they've been very passive. This is not the Burrito we normally see where they win a point and then they go aggressively zone and keep everyone off mount. Even throughout that ice binds early on, D69 had a very legitimate chance of coming back because they weren't getting zoned out like they normally do. Yeah, that's correct. And we saw Burrito, as you said, pull back. But then aggressive zoning did start to come through, especially in the third round capture, notably from Spunky playing Maldamba that game. And that was primarily to charge that Dread Serpent ultimate. It was a risky play, a risky maneuver, but we did see that Dread Serpent pay dividends yeah. towards the end. So good also at setting up kills, but baiting out Immortal from Elven Path as well, which really helped out towards the end. And that's been the key is what equity can you get not only of the ults you convert, but for instance, in that last fight, it was a single Maldamba ultimate and it spawned out the Immortal and the Hexafire. So it was one for two. And then again, that odd man advantage, that odd man situation is where Burrito thrives. Yeah, very well done by them. I do got to give credit where credit is due as well to Bonkers on the Shaolin. Many times you saw him, especially in that fin uh, the, yeah, the final push, you actually saw Shaolin position himself in such a way where he saw those angles right through the doorway, was able to pick off the Ruckus, got sizable damage on the Fernando. And that was just very, very well done by them. This burrito team, I feel they are clicking gotta also commend lazy because lazy's harass has been outstanding dives in shoots down a rocket and it's mostly been on ruckus too is what i've noticed that you know he kind of sets it up just to ensure that he could dive right in there get that shot in there come back out be a pain in the neck which has honestly been the theme for burrito just being a pain in the neck for District 69. And that's the theme with Eevee in general, too, is you get that blink, you get that bonus percentage on your next couple seconds afterwards, and that does so much work to anybody. It doesn't matter if you're a frontliner or if you're a backliner. That's just, it hurts so bad. And then to think about the fact that even as a ruckus, you have to flick your mouse so much just to try to track her. It's very distracting. Of course, Ruckus dealing with the same damage. You don't have that burst, whereas something like Androxus does, where you can just three shot an Eevee. But it's, I mean, Burrito is full of playmakers. They have Lazy, they have Bonka, but they work together as a team. And I feel like Lazy was able to get into the backline and harass because one thing that we did notice Bonka doing all game is pick up Wrecker, so more damage to shields with that uh, aggressive itemization. And then as soon as Elven Path dives into the backline, tries to disrupt, pops their shield up, Planted comes out from Shell. In. The arrows fire through immediate shield cleanup, which means that there is no defensive play available for District 69, and Lazy can go ham in the back line. Yeah. Work out so many times. Very impressive stuff. Exactly. And, you know, the other side of things, we're spending so much time talking about Burrito, but we have yet to really name Sheepa yet. He's played three different characters over four different maps mostly relying to the direct damage. And he, in that last bit, you could see how flexible he really is. And it's really going to come down to what is he able to do to get his team back in it? Because Bonker's been the star here. And that's surprising coming from someone who is just a recent addition because of the substitute. Very right. And Sheepa notably has one of the most amazing Cassies that I think we've ever seen. We normally highlight Perdo as the DPS superstar for District 69, playing so much Androxus, notably has a good Cassie in Shaolin too. But it's Sheepa who's really come out to play with this pick. But one thing I do also just want to highlight there is that we saw a couple of times Sheepa pulling off some jump shots on Cassie at close range. And when you jump in Paladins with some champions, uh, champions you gain reduced 
accuracy whilst you're in the air, missing a couple of crucial, a couple of crucial shots, which led to kills getting away. And it's little fixes like that, which I think may have just been holding District 69 back in that last map. We're now two maps to two. The min-maxing, these tiny little adjustments are going to be so, so crucial to either team if they want to gain any kind of advantage. And it's just the best of three now, Golden Boy. This is, <laughs> this is what it's all about. Yeah, you couldn't have asked for a better final here. We thought we were all talking, and we thought, oh, man, District 69. This, this could be a 4-0 sweep if it keeps going like this. This is not good. But I'm glad that we get to see more Paladins, and I'm glad that people get to experience it a bit more. Uh, this game, you know, is unique. When you look at the approach, and, and I'm coming from the outside, right? Sure. I'm coming from the outside. I don't like you guys who are deeply involved in this community. It is unique in its approach, right? From the champion's draft to how you even carry ultimates into the next round. These things really play such a huge impact. And now we get ready for game five. And these are the things that these players are going to be thinking about. The champion draft here coming through in District 69, they get their two comfort picks, Fernando and Ruckus. But it's good to see Burrito get that Cassie yet again. And it's interesting because usually when we see people going into the face of Fernando Ruckus, they try to prioritize the Shaolin because, again, like you had mentioned, Vox, that planet is so devastating with Wrecker online to get rid of those shields. So it's going to be both bows and, again, Perdo's probably going to get his Androxus. But what, what I think is really important here is we're going on the Frozen Guard, one of the Glacier Keep maps where it, you just have so many long lines of sight, especially on the payload push. So Cassie and Shaolin both not suffering from damage. Fall off is really key here. District 69 get Maldamba taking that away from Spawn. Funky is important. Didn't see him perform as well on Ying as he has done on Maldamba, so that could be a bit of a thorn in the side of Burrito here. But again, as you said, Poto does get Androxus. The other interesting thing, and this was the kind of pocket strategy for Abyss when they were playing, was the fact that they utilized either Grover or Kinesa, and we actually saw them use both on this map, because again, like you had mentioned, the long line of sight can create a lot of separation. It's really tough to close that distance, and it's not really been a pocket pick at all, really, in any kind of theory, for either Burrito or District 6. So, again, it comes down right here, Golden Boy, to what is this 10th pick? Because it's been the flex, and Pip is an interesting one. It's going to be Pip again. It's the second time that we have seen it run by District 69 now, but they didn't pull it off too well the first time. Double support, double frontline coming through again. And, oh, my goodness, things are going to make, well, Pip's going to make them interesting. A lot of, lot of pressure on the Androxus. We'll see how Perto can handle it. But, guys, this is going to be a great matchup. Game five underway. We're tied two to two. It's the finals. Who's going to come out on top and go over the edge here? Will it be Burrito? Will it be District 69? Time to send it to your casters. Thank you, Golden Boy. Well, we know there will be at least two more games. And that's exciting if you're a Paladins fan here. My name is Rene. This is High Res Pretty Hair. And we're going to be casters going in for this action now. I love the draft coming out from D69, Nick. This is a lot of synergy. This is what won them earlier games in this whole set. And I'm really loving the pip at the end. I think Burrito's draft is superior on this map. The long distance line of sights they're going to be able to abuse. District 69 pigeon hold themselves a little bit into a shorter range draft that wants to stay together. Burrito can stay spread out and pick District 69 apart, soften them up from a distance. I think it's going to be all them. It's going to be very important, too, because Lazy is another animal when he's put on an EV. You saw him on Victor earlier on. We're like, what are you doing? And now he's on EV, and he's just playing this champion to the best, to the nth degree. And without further ado, let's begin game number five here. Burrito Esports or D69, who's going to take the lead? Bert will be on EV, actually. So Lazy will be on the Cassie Bonker, on Shaolin, Spunky on the Ying, and Theo on Makoa. Erdo. On Androxus once again, Sheepa on Pip, unbelievable on Ruckus, Elven Path on Fernando and Jera on Maldon. But the big thing here is Bird having the flexibility to play this EV. It's a whole different pattern than what District 69 has been used to when Lazy plays it. First blood goes to Perdo. Lazy, all the talk about him has been shut down by the King of the Skies, Androxus. And now he's going to continue his rampage. Bonker, though, slays Unbelievable, who is on the point, and it will slowly start to tick up for Burrito Esports. 18% and counting on the objective here. E69 trying to feel their way in. For trying to find a lucky shot on anyone. 950 damage, nothing to snuff at. You can hear the planet coming out as well. Just keeping D69 busy, not letting them reinforce their point control. Lazy getting a little bit of this free fire. Going to be forced to retreat. 
as he has been snuffed out. But this free fire right here onto this Ruckus is so important. They want to finish him off. He gets him lazy with the long range shot. He's put himself in a bit of a spot though, but Thiel is backing him up. The Turtle and the Winter Witch working together here to stay the king of the sky. So Androxus and D69 will pull back for now and potentially for this capture objective. 87% on the clock, Nick, and I'm not sure they can get back. The zone is so good from Burrito because they are able to poke out from such a long range. District 69, nowhere near where they need to be. Scout already charged. Lazy is miles ahead of everyone in this game. They've got two minutes though, Nick. So now the time has been put on the clock. The payload needs to be pushed to the objective. And that is what Burrito Esports are gonna try to do. Zone out some space for that payload to move safely. And they're doing such a good job of that. Deal on the Makoa, lazy on the Hunter's daughter. Cassie is being so phenomenal with that crossbow. And what a shell shield to keep her and Deal alive. But now the Volpine comes through. An AOE heal will keep him alive. But Bonker with the shot from the Bow Brother, Shaolin. Range, we'll range, up. range is the name of Burrito's game right now. Spreading out, you can see two backliners just kept busy that whole time by Bird on this EV. They're spreading this composition out, looking for pincers wherever appropriate. And District 69 is gonna take a lot of communication to be able to pull it off. Monkey's in a little bit of trouble, but he's got some Ying illusions that will help block the line of sight to an unbelievable has. He's by himself here. He is just on an island. He is gonna go down very easily. Lazy hunting him down. Down, as the Huntress should do. Loving the crossbow there, and she's now loving the way she's playing as well. Lazy, so well in this game after previous games, finding his rhythm. The star of Burrito is finally looking like his old self. A minute and six seconds on the clock. Look at Bird all the way in the back line. Bonker finds a long range kill onto Peridot. Bird just camping out in D69's base. He's not putting themselves in a position to be taken off. Goes in Ice Storm on the support, trying to pick up the kill. Okay, there's an Ice Storm, but will it secure a kill? Maldamba helps himself to get away, forcing the pressure out onto the Eevee, and now Elvis Bath will secure the deed, and Eevee will go back to base. Bird will be falling, but look at the chickens coming through. Shipa, Perdo, they'll combine to take two down. Feeling lazy, will not be able to push any longer, but Bonker, he's alive and well. Four streak for Shaolin. Watch your head, boy. Perdo takes back to spawn, but stabilizing right now our District 69. This is where their composition is going to start to shine. When they're all grouped up around the base, it's going to be more difficult for Burrito to try and spread them out, especially when they're waiting for Spunky to respond. Now, this is not where you want Pip. That's what Eevee can do. She can go up onto that upper rafters with a blink and force Pip away. That's exactly what she's trying to do, but geez, the damage is real. And this is where the zone comes through for D69, Nick. This is where Unbelievable can have a little bit of success. He's out in the open when he's on that objective point in the igloo, but when he's there defending, those long lines of sights will help him as well for that consistent damage. Keeping everyone poked out low. Notable ultimates just used was Evil Mojo from Sheepa. Will not have that available. Immortal, Hexafire, all going to be online. But frankly, I don't see Burrito putting themselves close enough to Unbelievable for that ultimate to really find the mark. Scout's going to be online again for Lazer, so he'll be able to spot out any funny business coming out from District 69. Ancient Rage also available from the Accursed Arm, notably up for District 69. So he is going to have a lot riding on him and him alone. There is no setup from the Evil Mojo. There is no setup from the Dread Serpent. It all comes down to Perdo and his aim. The set is tied 2-2. The game on Frozen Guard is tied 1-1. One one. And this will determine who will go ahead and continue to push the payload. The objective is at 0%. Both teams fighting around the flank. A nice planet from Shaolin will secure damage off Makoa's dredge anchor. He's staying in the back line, and they take down Elvin Pass. It's just huge for Burrito. T69 now without a tank. That's gonna force Unbelievable out of the objective. Onto the open, this Ruckus is getting terrorized. They're having the chance to go for the pincer maneuver. Unbelievable so low right now. Doesn't get out of combat. Starting to be healed up. Doesn't get the impaler off, but has planet available to him. Perdo oh. says no oh. more, but Bunker answers back. Takes him down out of the skies. Planet might as well be an ultimate in itself. All the damage and all of B69 have gone down to Burrito. 
It is looking like the Bonker Show right now. He is on an eight streak, feeling confident, and so is Burrito, two to one. This is a substitute player for Burrito right now, unafraid to go toe to toe with what we are calling the best Androxus in the world, shutting him down. Once again, Bonker making a name for himself on the Shaolin. I mean, he trades an ultimate for a Q. Just, just the normal ability. That is so impressive and a little bit of a, well, actually a huge mistake by Perdot trying to just focus down Shaolin, but unfortunately coming out the worst. There's so much wind up on a cursed arm. Bonker easily able to read the play. Lazy and Bird keeping the pressure up, keeping the stagger going. Lazy or Bird being shut down now by Perdo. It's going to give District 69 a little bit of room to work with. And this payload has gone pretty much as far as it did the entire push. And still a minute and 38 seconds on the clock, Nick. What does C69 need to do to stabilize here? Finding picks, chasing down these kills. Perdo finding Spunky on the back foot right now. Arborito, they need to continue to push for him, but this cop is so immobile. The baiting Elven Path, it was just trying to do his job, throwing him off the map with a dredge anchor. Into the drink, as Vox says, he goes down into the water, and that turtle will stay on the high ground. Nice Lazy. roll. Nice roll, baiting out the reversal damage, and however, he will find it off the field, and never step away to safety, and this is where Pip wants to be. Not on the ground next to the turtle, he's gonna heal himself up. Will he get away? He has. Lazy goes down, Elven Path with a double, unbelievable, follows it up, and what a great peel by the two front lines of D69. Just so tanky, and they're forcing Burrito to come to them, which is where they're going to be strongest. But Burrito showing that they have the composition designed to take this capture point. That's where it's all really going to be decided, unless Burrito able to find a conversion. They're coming back as five, 40 seconds on the payload. There's a great start to the fight from Bird. Oh, Burrito goes down, Theo misses the hook, but Elvin Bath is slain as well. Bunker is on a roll again, and he's got his ultimate to boot, seven and two for the Shaolin, and he's the sub of the team as well. Cassie with the bow, looking to find unbelievable. The hook will secure the damage easily guaranteeing a kill. Dodge roll just to secure some space, but Lazy goes down. This is all they need. This will be their final attempt here with 10 seconds left on the clock. They have got to do it, and they've got to do it now. More positioning from Lazy. He's going to be picked off. Immortal coming out to keep everyone alive for now. Spunky trying to keep everyone oh. popped up. Elven Pass going to go down. Dread Serpent buying time for D69. Dread Serpent on the way. It's going to help clear off Burrito Esports. Overtime ticking in. Ice spot there. The present would be here for them if they can secure this objective, but it looks like they're going to get forced away. And D69 will come through with a 2-2 tie, a defense successful yet again. I really hate Lazy getting picked off at the start of that fight. That was an incredibly aggressive roll. He was yeah. the only thing District 69 even had to shoot at. They were all on the yeah. high ground, basically target practice yep. for them at that point. But leading the damage chart still is going to be Burrito to be expected given the double frontliner, double support composition from District 69. Perdo not too far behind, but the master ridings coming out from District 69 tells me they're looking to mobilize on this Burrito Esports squad. They're looking to get up in their face and not let them be comfortable from long range. There's a lot of healing for D69. If they can make it happen and stay alive, their survivability could be paramount in winning this next, next objective bird around the outside, looking to figure out who his target will be. The blink is available, so is the sword. Lazy rolls back, already poked a half health. The shield from Fernando goes down, he finds Elvin Path, he takes him down, Bird goes back, he's damaged over time, but he's gonna face off the Androxus, the Hex of Fire is gonna secure that death. The Volpine will go down thanks to the Hunter's Daughter, and no, Sheepa is dead, unbelievable, has secured a double kill for D69. This is what they need, their healing, their sustainability now will be very, very valuable with the objective ticking their way. Lazy rolling out, showing everyone no one knows where he's going to be. Elven Path just now spotting him out, but District 69 very heavily in favor on this capture point. A lot of ultimates used from both squads here. Ancient Rage notably still on the table. Bird almost has Ice Storm ready to go. A lot of ultimates starting to come up for Burrito, who wants this take back. Deal does not have Ancient Rage. In fact, Deal goes down. These 69 are looking really strong right here. It is up to Burrito to do something out of this world. And there comes the Winter Witch. Speaking of magic, they're going to need to pull off a magic trick. Here's Funky. He goes down, and they stay alive. D69 with the sustain of Sheepa and of Jera. The double healers will keep Unbelievable alive and allow him and his team 
to go ahead and capture this third objective. Repulsor field so massive in that fight. 50% area of effect damage reduction coming out from Unbelievable, keeping him alive from Spunky, who was charging in, landing every shot, but it just wasn't enough. Ying doing good damage in the support category, but just not enough to get it done. Softening up oh. field right now is in a bad spot. And Pep is going out of control, Sheepa is just taking it to the turtle. The Vulpine winning the battle of the animal races there, but looks like the ice block has been gifted. They're gonna take that present open-handedly there, and now all of a sudden D69 steamrolling through this push. A lot of momentum on their side as well. This is not good for Burritos Esports composition. They don't have a lot of front line to try and stabilize. They don't have any big ultimate. Oh, Hit oh. ultimate comes out, picks up Theo. This could be the conversion a for D69. Oh, Nick, they're gonna take him down. It's everything that they want. And they have the ability to win the game here and go up 3-2. They need it. Evie is back, but she is gonna fall soon. And there it is, D69. You cut to Helmet Bath. He's clapping for his team. They have taken the victory, taken yet again another lead over Burrito at a land stage and gone up 3-2 with game match point coming up in this next one. Momentum shifting so quickly in this series. One repulsor field, I feel, won that last team fight there. A lot of great ultimates were used in combination, but D69 able to hold on to a lot of their equity and use it to punch through right at the end. Fantastic job. I mean, that was a great play. Could have gone either way. I mean, both of us were talking about the strengths of the lineups, and it did go D69's way, although earlier on, Burrito had a lot of success. Let's send it to the analyst with Golden Boy to break it down for us and see exactly how that game went down. Thank you so much, guys. We are looking at such a great series here. District 69 able to bring it back, making it three to two, one game away and they will be your Paladins Invitational Champions. Can Burrito fight back is the question. Guys, what were your major takeaways from that game? Of course, I'm just going to say it. Stop letting Perdo get the damage. <laughs> Stop letting him get the damage, Rox. It's like, come on, man. It's, it's borderline beyond ridiculous. <laughs> like, it's just, it's insane. Perdo is nuts. He's, he's incredible. He's by far the best Androxus player in the world, period. And on top of that, the interesting thing about the drafting so far is they're able to get Androxus rather safely later on in the draft. Right, it's not something which has been prioritized a great deal by Burrito at all. Burrito actually prioritizing Makoa over everything else except when they were second pick. And actually, it was the game where they were second pick and didn't have Makoa, which they really started to have a comeback. And I'm starting to wonder if the Makoa emphasis is hurting them. But from that game, I only have one real takeaway, and it's Sheepa, Sheepa, Sheepa on the pit, making things happen with that slow, the positioning, and evil mojo as well. The real interesting dynamic here is not just these two teams heading up against each other, but also the individuals that match up in the similar roles, like Bird versus Sheepa. Both of them have now played Pip successfully. Bonker versus Perdo. Thiel versus Elven Path. I mean, there, everything just matches. Even you could even go as far to do the Spunky versus Jarrett, like the, the support on support that's been happening as far as what they're able to do. It's next level play from all across the board, and you hit it on the head is the fact that, that Sheepa is now coming to life with a really kind of a... I don't know where pick. Such a diverse champion pool for this player as well. He's played Pip now, he plays a great Cassie. We know that Sheepa can play a Dynamite EV, just hasn't had the opportunity to. And going back to that whole thing with Perdo and Androxus, I feel like because Burrito are prioritizing EV so much as a pick for themselves, they're also trying to take that away from Sheepa because we all know how devastating they are. And that's just letting Androxus slip through. Going on to the next map coming up of Jaguar Falls once again, what do you think we're going to be seeing? Well, this is actually really interesting here because they, there are the two map bands, so now we're going to see repeat maps. So going back to what Jaguar's Falls was before, it was 4-3 to three back then, and that was a really, really, really close game. And I think we're going to have to see, it's going to be interesting here, because this is where if there is any flex picks as far as let's try to style a little bit differently than what they had just previously seen just a couple maps before, this would be the time to do it, and it could be the make or break point of this entire finals. Well, we did see Sheepa pull out Bomb King during the group stages. Might see it again, oh. but <laughs> it's a little bit of a risky pick. I don't think we'll be seeing any Grover today. However, the, ch the crowd that was chanting Grover in the audience yesterday for the semifinals was, was fantastic. But none of the European teams really seem to pick them up. And I do feel that potentially yeah. that could synergize well with Burrito with the emphasis they are putting on Shaolin currently. It's a risk. It's a risk if they do it. I doubt they will. Let's hope for the best, though. District 69 right away. 
going right into this, and they're going to lock down Makoa Fernando also there. So those first picks, we've seen them happen time and time again. No surprise there. The ruckus goes to Burrito. Oh, this, wait, never mind. The ruckus yeah. goes to District 69. Oh, my goodness. Uh, this is the fun thing about when District 69's in that driver's seat. And the real fun stat here is the fact that when both of these teams have first overall pick, Makoa is picked every single time. So even though the Fernando ruckus has been so strong for both teams, and really notably District 69, it also goes to show that they still value the Makoa pick more. And here we go, Shalin and Androxus locked in for District 69. Poto once again getting the God Slayer champion. Burrito keeping up their emphasis on Eevee and Cassie as well. So getting in some damage type splits is oh. very important for them. Here's where things do get interesting as Pip is locked for District 69. And all the supports are on the board. Maldama's on the board, Ying's on the board. They're actually going for double here. So this is really interesting as well because you're gonna have to take a look as far as Sheba will likely stay on that pit and will be playing him as a flanker damage dealer and less of kind of focusing on what he's gonna be doing as a, an actual support. We're gonna be seeing a lot of one-on-ones, I think, here. And this puts actually a very interesting player. You know what, actually, I think this puts an interesting player on pit potentially because we all know about Unbelievable's pocket pick. Pip, that was a strategy that she pulled out and has favored since the very beginning of Paladins way back in when. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and throw it to the casters, but I want to get your thought real quick. Who's going to take this? Is District 69 going to be the Paladins Invitational Champions? Not after this game. Hmm. I disagree. I think District 69 <laughs> are going to come back with a momentum and roll. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead, send it over to our casters and get this game rolling on. Well, Vox thinks D69 are going to close it up now. Alan thinks Burrito have a good draft and a good chance of pushing this to a game seven. My name is Rene. This is High Res Pretty Hair. And we're going to cast the action for you. Not a lot of guesses for me. I think I've, uh, you know, spoken, and sometimes that's been correct. Sometimes it's been wrong. I'm ready to see this. Great teams going at it with everything on the line. This is what you come to pay for. I think fairly even in terms of the draft. District 69 going to be a little bit more execution heavy. A lot of crowd control, but it's going to yeah. take a lot of timing dredge anchors into impales to Maldamba stuns. It's going to be the name of the game for them. Yeah, and there's a lot of different variants on who can play what. We talked about Unbelievable being able to kind of play that pip role as well. Will we see an offensive version of pip here since they have the double healer coming out with Maldamba to really keep those tanks high? It's going to be a good look for them to come and bring this offensive pip, keeping some of the flankers alive, hopefully, as they are going to dive that all important double front line composition coming out with Burrito. Cooldown management of the repulsive field, that area of effect damage reduction going to be extremely Extremely important, as you can see, both teams riding up on each other right now. Game, Game six, getting going here between D69 and Burrito Esports. Already the pip taking action onto the objective, but Fernando is holding it down strong. Elvin Pap is on the Makoa this time, but Perdo on that God Slayer is gonna be slaying down the champions of the realm. He takes down Lazy, unbelievable, takes down Veal, and D69, despite having 0% on the capture objective, are snowballing this game in kills. Now moving out, Shifa around the corner, finds a pop shot, and a dredge anchor gonna pull Spunky into his doom, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Planet shutting down all of this front entryway here for D69, who climbs north of 50%. And it seems like Deal is getting poked out. About half health is the Spaniard. He wants to get onto that point. That's where he feels comfortable, but he also wants to flank targets and put damage on the back line. He gets stunned out the second he runs in. He charges into another stun. Maldama securing the kill and helping Unbelievable to finish off Fernando. Nice dodge rolls there by Bonker. He's got to stay alive. It's all they have to do. Burrito Esports, 39% and counting, but they can't touch the objective. It's overtime taken away, and Lazy's doing his best to stall it. Trying, blinking in, blinking out. Wormhole going to be used. Forced to roll in, forced to die. is going to be Bonker. No choice there. Theo has returned, but a trickle coming through for Burrito. They aren't here as five. They aren't as strong as District 69 look right now. Able to round the corner, diving is Bird. Pretty big miss took though by Elvin Path. It's really good that his team was there to support him. They're in such a good position. Both flanks firing onto the center. Elvin Path is low though, and Burrito Esports are trying to make a comeback. The site has failed them, and Shaolin pops into the ultimate. An eight streak for Shifa. He's looking to tear down everyone else with the Heat Haze invisibility. And now, Steel back, but the Dread Serpent hits. Harder. So much crowd control for District 69. They're doing a great job CCing it together. Here comes the Ice Storm out on the backside, locking Bird down. Elvin Path in a bit of a rough spot. He's going to try to take oh. Bird down with him, but 
Burrito clawing their way back. Our D69 about to throw this point. Burrito are back 99% on the objective. Chipa, an unbelievable try to do their best, but Chipa goes down. Unbelievable goes down. Alvin Path is a turtle and he's too far away. Burrito Esports will climb back and push the overtime and gain the objective in game six. Point one for Burrito. Walker finding the clutch positioning there to be able to free fire for just long as needed to try and take down the rest of D69. I cannot believe they were unable to convert there, being 99 for so long. Burrito with an almost like full take back. You think sometimes that they are wasting time losing credits to the enemy team when they just stagger those respawns and they go in one at a time. But not if you're sending in a Ruckus. Not if you're sending in a Fernando. They have a lot of staying power. Even a Ying has a lot of staying power, although she's not using it right now. Chipa getting a double kill and now focusing on the Ruckus. It's just target practice here. She's going to force them back. And of course, the explosive flash is going to slow them as well, helping to take down Lazy. Elvin Bath and Chipa combining to take down the carry on Burrito Esports, now stabilizing this objective push with a minute and 35 seconds on the clock. Field, or Lazy doing a great job getting the Ice Storm recharged already for her. Pulled into a rough positioning here. The CC chaining from District 69 is beautiful, and that is going to be so key in shutting down these double frontliners, just juggling Bird around the battlefield. And she puts spots out the Hunter's daughter. He wants to finish it off. He also spots out Lazy. And he's trying to finish him, but he's going to be forced back. Bonker doing a lot of work on that, Cassie. The sub from Burrito playing lights out all tournament. Now, this is a very important time, Nick. They've got to solve this push. It's getting dangerously close to their objective. Still with a minute left on the clock as well. Picks trickling through for D69. They're forced back into spawn as Burrito rounding the final corner. Lazy is here to zone using the ice storm. Here's the pit, but there's not much follow-up on that polymorph. Nothing. Only the field goes down. Bullpine ultimate use. So Evil Mojo will be taken into account. Chiba goes down thanks to Lazy's play on the Eevee. He is comfortable on this champion, but Elvin Pack, he's comfortable on Mako. He's going to slay Lazy in the air. Perdo will finish off Spunky, and that will be a stabilization for Burrito Esports. 24 seconds now on the clock. D69, excuse me, D69 will stabilize, and Burrito will now have to push forward at the correct time. It's going to be a lot going forward, but they need to figure out how to do it. Again, I don't like Lazy's choice there to just soar through the field at such low HP. Eevee just as effective from long range as she is from close, so undetected there in the back line. I would have liked to see him go in, stunned out on the high ground and forced into Ice Block as we head into overtime. All task ahead for Bonker and the boys of Burrito, but they believe in themselves. They're going to get one kill down on their team, though. Lazy will follow up and get revenge, taking down Unbelievable Bird. Will slay Jera. This is huge. Bonker goes in. The sub from Burrito Esports is going ham. Elvin Path, though, pops into Ancient Rage. He's going to turn into the turtle. 10,000 HP is going to save his life or it's going to delay his death. Back to base goes the turtle. Onto the capture objective goes D69 and Burrito because Burrito just pushed this in. 2-0. Bird buying so much time for his team there. Elven Path unable to get a kill in the Ancient Rage. Goes down all 10,000 of that HP. Was chewed through on that last point. Absolutely insane play. Coordination coming out from Burrito. All five members going into Cauterize. All five members getting Cauterized. Two online in round two. Trying to shut down both of these healers on D69. Birdo needs to step this up. Him and his teammates are counting on that Androxus draft. They took it earlier in the draft than usual. They prioritized that. They allowed the Ruckus to go away because they wanted the Makoa. And it looks like it's coming back to haunt them right now. Can they turn it around? They've got one objective point to really prove their medal here. Otherwise, it's looking very dismal for the second seed in Europe. But Bonker on the left-hand side, he's having a great game. Eight streak for him, six and three, Nick. He is looking unstoppable right now. Pop shots around the corner on the pair. Joe, who is sitting just above his support, Jera in damage. We're going to need to see more out of him if D69 are to stand a chance. 45% already on the capture point for Burrito before a kill even falls. Bonker just in the back line, slaying him down, and all of the damage from range is going to mean that D69 can't even step a toe onto the objective. This is nearly captured, and I don't see any way right now of Burrito giving this up. Nine 99% and a full point for the number one seed in EU. They're trying to tie this game up and force a game seven. Flawless capture from Burrito there. 
coming off the back of that cap and convert down 2-0 in this game. District 69 just didn't look themselves. They looked a little scared. They were playing too passive. The evil mode is going to come out, but so much time is being bought here. Repulsive field comes out. Only one kill is found. Not a lot of value from that evil mojo. And so they're going to back off, though, despite the lack of kills that came through, Nick. A lot of that pressure that that ultimate applied forced Burrito back and allowing E69 here, if they can save off this objective push and attack by Burrito to get one point on the board. If they defend here, they will get themselves a chance to win, and it's gonna be a long road ahead, but I believe they're up for the task. They've done it before. They wanna try and do it again. The positioning gonna be key here for Parado. Theo hooked out and take him down. In between the shield cooldown, nice pseudo front line coming out from Parado, but locked in the life storm right now. Ooh. Lazy finds the pop shot and the escape. He wants that kill, Perdo missed the timing, and that is gonna come back to haunt him. Bonker and Spunky clean up Perdo and Elven Path. This is huge, he pays pop by Kipa. He wants to take care of the enemies, and he also just wants to get away. He needs his life. So he pops his ultimate defensively so he doesn't die. That's the amount of pressure. Burrito Esports has, but Chiba pops back. Gets Spunky out of the game. Dread Serpent comes through. Spunky goes out. Chiba with the long range from Shaolin is cleaning things up. But the Hexafire is here. Shell Shield coming through as well. Keeping okay. most of that contained, but not for long. Immortals keeping Bird alive. Nice shot on the Lazy. will drop him. Ancient Rage not going to be available. Elven Path goes down. Burrito looking to close it out. Bonker, could he take down the King of the Sky? No, oh, Birdo comes through. And Drox is with the Ultimate, but here's Bird, he's still alive, he's got a her. That shield will fall soon, Shiba, it's up to him. No, Shiba is down, D69 is down. Burrito Esports has tied the game and forced this into a game seven. The Paladins Invitational at HRX is going the distance. Oh my God, I can't believe this is exactly what I was dreaming about last night. I cannot wait to see what the analysts have to say about this Game 7 of the Paladins Invitational, ladies and gentlemen. The bird is the word as they manage to make this a distance here, folks. We're going to Game 7, Paladins Invitational. You couldn't have asked for a better display of this game than this right here. All right, fellas, let's, uh, let's talk about this now and, and discuss the, just the craziness that we just <laughs> witnessed. Uh, this... I mean, where was this burrito, you know, <laughs> when we were in Jack Balls before? Yeah, the first time they got 4 0 on Frog Isle and the 4 3. It's, it's interesting because now we have two 4 0s, two 4 3s, two 4 2s, and it's going to come down to just the last best of one, and it's going to go backwards back to Frog Isle. Oh, this one's oh going to be interesting. District 69 started off the set with a 4 0 on this map. Burrito pulled themselves right back into the final game with a 4-0 on Jaguar Falls and Frog Isle. Well, I don't know. It's going to be difficult. I think it's going to come down so much to the draft on this map, which was just won yeah. outright by District 69 at the beginning of this set. They slapped them in <laughs> game one. I mean, it was just abuse. So, yeah. like, they really need to figure out what's going to work this time around. But let's talk about the draft phase here because you saw some really creative things from Burrito uh, opting to go this time for the Fernando and the Ruckus. Uh, but continuing to control that Eevee. They've had Eevee every game, every game, and it's been working out wonderfully for them. Yeah, very wonderfully. And it's interesting because Lazy's played her and Bird's played her, and they both play the character very differently. A bird has a much more kind of like, you know, holds onto the handlebars while Lazy kind of does the look mom, no hands yeah. while uh, he's playing the Eevee, which is really, really interesting as far as how do you play up against that style of character. But, you know, also getting back to the front line, the Fernando Ruckus, I think, has been executed so much better by Burrito than it has been by D69. Really? That, that, I think so. I mean, just based on how quick that went and the pressure that Thiel put on was incredible. Yeah, but, hey, but you're forgetting game one, though. You're forgetting <laughs> game one, where District 69 on the Fernando and the Ruckus looked unstoppable. So I, I, I agree that they looked fantastic, but it's hard to say given how game one went. That's very true. The thing that comes down to is I really believe Thiel is able to play Makoa and Fernando at both the highest level. I think Elven Path falls off a little bit when he plays Fernando. He plays a really, really good Makoa, and he's, he's an aggressive guy. He likes to jump in there. He likes to get those early kills, and he likes his team to be right back behind him. But I'm wrong here. Burrito goes actually going for Makoa first. Which should, well, we think it's going to give District 69 Fernando and Ruckus as well. Let's see if they make things interesting. No. The standard picks coming out to start off this game. Wow. Charlene then will be the next pick from Burrito. Likely going over to Bonka. 
and Cassie as well. The double damage coming through from the double bows is good for Marisa. Yeah, and you really can't expect anything different just simply because Bonker really has done very well. He, he you know, he signs up as having a really nice Androxus, but his Shaolin's been next level. But here we go. We're actually going to see Eevee picked up. And this is strange. District 69 has played Eevee a total of one time. Once they've played Eevee in their semis and previous. And that's remarkable, but it does give double flank to District 69, which could be the perfect thing to potentially deal with the double support coming out of Bree. So if both of these flankers get into the back line and start disrupting, it will definitely turn the heat up for the spicy team. All right, guys. Who do you got? This is it. All the marbles. Everything's out there. Who's going to win? The problem here is going to be what is Eevee able to do? And since they do not have as much experience, I, I'm going to go Burrito. Okay, Burrito, what about for you, Vox? I'm going to agree. They demonstrated double support draft fantastically on Ice Mines, and I have every faith the Burrito are ready to do it again. All right, guys. Well, that will do it from us here at the desk. Will Burrito be the Paladins Invitational Champions, or will it be District 69 over to our casters? Thanks, Golden Boy. There's so much on the line for both of these teams. They traveled from Europe, both of them, just to come to Atlanta and play each other. They could have stayed home, but they decided to force a Game 7, and I'm sure all of us are happy that's the case. My name is Rain Day. This is High res Pretty Hair. The finals of the Paladins 2017 High res Expo Invitational are about to begin now. And Nick, they already gave the advantage to Burrito at the analyst desk. I'm really not going to make a pick because I feel that this could go either way. Both of these teams, when they're on their comfort picks, and they are now, have shown that they can go the distance. I'm looking, I'm loving Burrito's draft right now. Bird, the guy, the mastermind behind a lot of these drafts, has been here before with Titan in the final game of Game 5 of the Smite World Championship. They've let Burri they've let District 69 get comfortable with this double front lighter, and now when all the chips are on the table, Bird, I think, on this pip, gonna be so pivotal into shutting it down. Game 7 of the Paladins. Invitational begins now. D69 already on the point, and Lazy and the boys of Burrito forced back. A nice 1v1 duel up into the air. Lazy needs to find a cheap against First Blood, though. The Takes aim, them down. The bow and the arrow cleaning up the king of the sky but lazy will fall finally from Sheepa, who blinks in as the winter witch to do her deed and now it looks like deal is in a bit of pressure here he is not going to stay up alive much longer unless moldaba can come through and he does but it's not enough to keep the big tank alive funky finding some key body blocks but bonker free firing right now into district 69 it's going to be very close here unbelievable by himself isolated on the point intel arrow is going to come out but it's not going to be good uh oh bonker still alive perdo is going to slay bird though they need to worry about this Androxus. They cannot let it all fall. Lazy has so many things to shoot at. Will he find what he needs? Theo helps him out there. A nice hook from Theo is going to secure Perdo, but Chifa comes through to save the day. Fernando is here. He is doing damage, but that damage is minimal in comparison to that 5,500 health pool that Makoa has. And now with another hook to seal the deal, Burrito have retaken the objective 24% and claimed a little bit of stabilization. But 99% for D69. They need a very, very very small window. One team fight will secure them. This payload, of the impale Ooh. off the edge of the map is not going to be good. Forced into the shield early, however, as Elven Path, a lot of crowd control. He's going to go down. Here's Perdo. He takes down Bird. Is he going to get the double? He has a reversal. He goes to the Shotlin. He needs one more. Nether step. He's going to shoot. Nether step again behind the wall. They're both of them. Shotlin is invisible. He cannot see him right now. Perdo hiding behind 93% on the objective. Shot down. Shuts him down. And Burrito shuts up any non believers. They take the first point in game seven the substitute stepping up against the superstar right now Perdo. Oh! that was an absolutely insane sparker right now impales elven path off the map off the map deal with the dredge anchor just securing what he loves to do so much and that's the to toss people into the drink burrito esports now coming through and trying to make this 8-2-0 lead on Frog Isle. They know how to play this map. They know how to dominate it. And here's the Hexafire to save them all off. It will work for a moment. And with Perdo, it'll give him the amount of time he needs to start taking down members of these Burrito, excuse me. Bonker, shooting arrows from the long distance here, trying to find an angle, trying to soften up District 69 right now. Burrito a little bit on the back foot right now. Need to be careful. In implanted immediately to rip through this Fernando shield. Impale arrow available once again, but Burrito just really low HP right now. Good withdraw by Sean Lin, also forcing 
the Makoa and the Fernando to take a little bit of an extra step towards his way. It's good for his offensive capabilities to stay in this back line. That way he can stay uncontested. Perdoe, however, is the site of Bonker. No one has touched him. Thiel with a triple kill on Makoa coming forward and zoning out everyone from D69. There's a minute and three seconds left on the clock, and they are scared to go near the hook. Momentum right now on the side of Burrito here. Dredge Anchor Shield's gonna cancel out Fernando Shield and force Immortal early. Shell Shield heals him up as well. Shell Shield coming forward. The spin is there. Everyone is a chicken and they're going down. Burrito Esports pushing this into the final payload. They want to get in another hook. By Thiel is gonna secure the deal and allow a two. Zero lead in game seven for Burrito. Bonker finding so many clutch wins in this game for Burrito. The substitute against the superstar, finding the clutch Lights shot, out. shutting him down, and then forcing Elven Path into the drink with the impaler arrow. The smallest window, probably the hardest crowd control to actually push somebody off the map with. Who would have thought that you bring in a sub to the biggest event of your career? and he outperforms even the superstars in the scene already. Bonker is 10,000 damage about ahead of his counterpart on D69, and if that continues, Burrito Esports will be hoisting the trophy. It's up to D69 now to stop this momentum and to gain another capture objective and push it back. But Thiel, he's gonna continue to zone as that McCoy, and if he can find a big hook here on Unbelievable, he can pull him out of position. Ruckus wants to stay on the objective. He's got Fernando protecting him as well. Thiel biding his time, wants to find the perfect moment just shooting cannons and reloading until someone takes one step out of position there he sees it unbelievable still not on the objective so nothing has happened they haven't wanted to go to where Thiel can find a hook on them poking out everyone right now fresh oh. anchor going to miss but unbelievable poise very aggressively Malata's gonna be shut down by this shell shield Perdo finds nothing with his accursed arm. They've both been poked, but D69 admittedly have been poked a little bit worse. And now, if Thiel can find the hook, he can. He goes up into the air. Perdo so clutch, but he goes down. Bonker takes out Chief Lazy, takes down Perdo. Burrito are back in this game. 58%, another clutch stretch anchor. Jera goes down. Keeping D69 pinned in their spawn is going to be critical here because they have the composition. This double frontliner can spearhead a charge back onto the point. Notable ultimates on the table are Hexafire right now. This is the firepower they are going to need to break Burrito. Burrito Esports are so close to capturing this objective, but D69, no, they need to stop everything happening. Veal is the one who is keeping this alive for them. They need to focus down the turtle. Three shots in a row. Will he find the fourth? They've got to take down the pip. They've invested so much time and energy. 90% on the objective. Burrito are still there, and no one's able to get him off. Your sight fails. You heat haze popped by Sha Lin, and now he's looking for a target to aim to. The game going to be avoided. Spunky takes down. Bonker, Jarrah Bonker goes off on Perdo. Double kill for the sub. Can he get a triple? Bonker with the triple kill. The sub for Burrito. Cleaning things up and on a rampage. 21 streak Two for kills. Bonker. Rips the Fernando shield down. Oh! Long range. Bonker is going what? mad right now. This man can't be stopped. Burrito with the chance to crown themselves the first Paladins Invitational champion. What is happening right now? Bunker has not died in what feels like three games. 22 streak is unheard of. They need to shut him down. Funky on a 19 streak as well, and Bird on a 12 streak. This is unprecedented. Paladins against D69. After taking a 2-0 lead against Burrito, they have clawed their way back here into this game to make it a 3-3 set, and they are on the precipice of going to roll and hang this trophy in their room. Very aggressive right now. Perdo taking the front line with the reversal for the time being. District 69 stabilizing a little bit cheaper, trying to find pop shots. D69 is charging forward, trying to capitalize on these low HP targets, finding two, finding three. It is not over yet, though, despite that moment of brilliance coming in by Bonker. And of course, the stat line that is so... In uh... What? Bonker just jumped off the ledge? That was a misplay. He was trying to reposition. Just to get repositioned, maybe. Just to get back to his team right now. Instead of feeding the credits to D69, Bonker just wants to jump off the ledge and get back 
respawn with its team immediately. Is, and when you have somebody isolated like that, D69 can wait and take him down late into the game and try and get him staggered from the rest of the team. So I think that's actually strategic from Bonker. They do have plenty of time, although he could have just waited there instead of jumping into the water. But I guess goes for the fanfare, and the fans did enjoy it here as well. Feel getting poked out heavily by the Fernando. He gets a next to midair shot. Thanks to Lazy, going to secure Jera and Perdo. Unbelievable follows in suit. Feel still on the front line, doing so much to zone out the members of D69. They cannot get close to the damage carries. They can't touch the Pip. They can't touch the Fernando. And, excuse me, the Maldamba and Fernando goes down thanks to guess who? Bonker. A lot of ultimates on the table. Everything now ready to go for Burrito. No Hexafire available. No Illusory Rift here. It's going to come down to the ultimate. Burrito rounding the final quarter. Bonker with another long range pick. Feel is hooking everybody and anybody he sees. This front line couldn't be started any farther. The tickets come out. Bonker on a 6 3. This could be it. Burrito Esports are looking to finish it off here, Nick. And it could be that your HRX 2017 champion is. Burrito, will you see it? Will it happen here? D69 trying to stabilize. He's Hayes pop there. No shut down immediately. Burrito taken. Burrito Esports, your invitational champion. Gentlemen, first of all, you guys already did, but one more time, congratulate your first Paladin's Invitational Victors, Burrito. <laughs> now, it's been hard fought and well earned, but don't let Bird tell you that. I got up here, before I get, gave him the mic, he said, easy 4-0. I don't know if that's actually how it went. I'll have to watch the VOD. But real quick, you guys went the distance uh, with District 69. Talk to me about how this set went and why it went so long. Uh, I don't know. I guess we, we had played against them so much. We were so comfortable then. Maybe we were a bit too comfortable. And when they brought out their, I guess, the Abyss meta, if you want to say that, then it's a bit rough. But, you know, it's all right different play styles and things like that. So you guys are the first victors, like I said, inching above District 69. What is it about Burrito Esports that makes you different than the rest of the crowd? Why are you the victors here today? Uh, I guess it's a lot of confidence. We don't really have a lot of nerves. We don't get affected by by like losing. We don't really tilt that much. Um, I don't know, it's just a lot of hard work, I guess. We're, we're, we're all good friends. We're basically a family, so. We work hard and we, we get what we, or I guess we, we get what we deserve. <laughs> now, while you were saying that, you said no nerves whatsoever. My man over here, you, you, you laughed and you said no nerves. Talk to me about how you were feeling during the whole event. I was so goddamn nervous all the fucking time. And so how did you, how did you fight through that and utilize that and sort of 
overcome that to wind up as the victor. I don't know. Lazy was even more nervous, so I was watching him. That's what it's really all about. So you guys taking home the trophy, taking home everything here. What? You know what? Just tell me how you're feeling. I mean, yeah, I, it feels great, of course. I, I just want to shout out, honestly, D69. Like, they performed better than I guess they should have with a sub. They had the same situation as us, and I think they, they really deserve coming second. Excellent. Well, one more time, congratulations from myself and the fans at home. You guys all played fantastic, but we do have a most valuable player. We're gonna toss it up to Golden Boy and the guys up to really break it down and see who is the MVP. Thank you so much, F. Dot Guys, what a final. It went the distance, game seven, but man, what a game seven for Burrito. They look like a force to be reckoned with. It, it really comes down to the fact that they got themselves back into a position where they could reset and say, this is now a best of three. And yeah. then past that, they went one and one, and then this is just a best of one. Let's just play our game. And that's the epitome of Burrito Esports. Small steps it uh, well. It ended where it all began on Frog Hill. And what a difference. District 69 looked so strong at the beginning of this set. But by the end of it, well, Burrito did manage to figure them out entirely. And when it came down to it, that last game was utterly bonkers. It absolutely was. And, you know, going I see through... what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there. He's You're really so good at this. He's really good. Oh, <laughs> overdone man. game Grover at this point. I've got a jam a pun in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? What are we doing? <laughs> the, the, the thing, if you look at the, how the maps went, you know, the last two 4 O's, that's just Burrito having the perseverance, having the experience and the resilience and other things that end with ints as well, to really go through and show their medal and win. Not a medal, but they get that awesome trophy, and this is just really, really good for the scene, too. Yeah. I mean, this is going to launch EU and NA Paladins in a new direction. Oh, for sure. I think this is fantastic. And uh, I I'm super happy about how this panned out. I know that, you know, at the beginning of the day, it was a super early start, real early in the morning. And, you know, we, we had one shout out to the people who came in early uh, to watch some Paladins. So you guys are awesome. But then on top of that, everyone came in and really started to appreciate just how insanely skilled this game is. So I do have an announcement to make, and we're going to be bringing him on the stage in just a second here. But the MVP for this matchup is none other than Bonker. Guys, give it up. And actually, he just passed right by the camera right here. Let's actually uh, bring him up here. Bonker, welcome, my man. How you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling great. Uh, it's an uh, indescribable feeling, to be honest. So, let me let me understand and, and and by the way this is this is yours so congratulations there i'm gonna give these away like candy it's great it feels yeah. feels awesome so guys give it up for bonker your mvp for the paladins invitational um all right i need to know something here real quick uh so when you're basically just beating the crap out of everyone do you feel like a, a badass you know that moment uh a little bit i guess that's <laughs> uh, caught by the moment and just Played my game as I should do. That 1v1 that you had against Perdo in the back line there, uh, how critical was that for your team? Uh, it was kind of critical, like, Bear was sh shouting to just to shatter the spawn timers, so I just was waiting behind the wall and got heals, and I one-shot him in the last, so it was kind of <laughs> easy. Oh, like, no, no big whoop, right? Yeah. You know, just casual one-shot, you know? Yeah. My goodness. I don't understand. I would be, like, not even able to sit right now if I were you. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, well, then again, that's why he's here. Look how calm I he know, is. Right? I mean, he has a man bun, too. God bless. You know, like, way to go. But, uh, all right, Bonker, I, I, I do want to ask you this. You were a sub yeah. coming into this, and, and I think that's the more impressive part. You synergize with this burrito roster very, very well. Uh, what's next for you? Where can people find you? Uh, they can find me in a team has no name. That's my real team, but uh, I don't know what's going to happen after this tournament, to be honest. All right. What about streaming? Do you stream? Uh, no, I don't. I, have, uh, I don't have that good computer yet, but maybe I'll get one. So we got to figure this out. We got, well, you <laughs> just won this tournament, so maybe you take some of that money, you get a computer, yeah. and then you stream. I know I'm looking forward to seeing some more insane plays from you, man. Congratulations. Guys, Thanks give it up once again for Bonker. Shift, any, any final thoughts before we close out?
Man, this has been just such a great highlight for Paladins in general. I mean, the EU scene has really shown up, and that's been the real key here is what has international Paladins looked like. And with Abyss making the semifinals, Matchpoint and Eager still putting up good shows, and of course having China, Brazil, and Latin America that show up. This is just really awesome for international Paladins. And with a Game 7 like that, their whole series, man, I, I, this is it's, it's only up from here. That's right, and don't forget as well the Radiant Land that's going to be coming up for the spring. That is equally as exciting. Paladin Esports has arrived. It is here to stay, and I'm very excited to see the future of this game for myself, as well as Shift, Vox, Rain Day, and Pretty Hair, and Cret, the great Cret. Let's not forget, you guys did a fantastic job all weekend long calling the action and bringing the viewers back at home some exquisite Paladins gameplay. Congratulations once again to Bonker. Congratulations to Burrito. They are your Paladins Invitational Champion. But coming up next, we're going to have the Xbox Smite Console Finals, guys. It's about to go down. It's going to be awesome. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.